All right, so here's the deal. Spoiler free run. Please do not backseat. Okay, this works exactly the same way that every other playthrough has worked. Do not backseat. Do not tell me what to do. Okay? You may think you're being helpful, but you are being annoying if you tell me what to do. I do not appreciate it. It does not add to my enjoyment of the game. Let me mess stuff up. Let me screw up. Let me figure stuff out. It's what I enjoy about games. Let me learn the world. Don't tell me about characters I haven't met yet. Don't tell me the motivations of people that I meet at the offset. Sit back and enjoy the sanctity of a person playing this game for the first time. I also want to reiterate that I play video games to illustrate psychological concepts. I do not play games to review them. I do not use, I don't play these games to make, you know, vast commentary on the gameplay mechanics, though I do mention it. I literally play these games so I can pause them a lot and say, here's an example of this thing. Gref, thank you for the 10 bucks. Wake up chat. We got a city to use as a model for illustrating psychological concepts. Thanks for the 10 bucks. Cooper, thank you for the 20 bucks. Hey, I don't always understand the stuff you say, but your content is heaps interesting, so keep it up. Thank you very much, friends, for the super chats. I really do appreciate those. Um, so yeah, we are going to, we're going to start blind. We're going to start fresh. And I hope that you will enjoy it. Be prepared for me to pause a ton. All right. And if uh, folks are watching the VOD, uh, I also ask that you please not spoil in the comments. I love reading comments. But please don't spoil stuff. So happy. Thank you for the five bucks. Happy New Year to you, too. This is going to be this is going to be awesome. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I understand that this game has a lot of mature themes in it. That includes things like sex, probably assault. Um, I'm sure there's probably suicidal and homicidal themes in here. Like, I'm aware that there is some real deep stuff here. If at any point, watching this game that I'm playing, or hearing my description of something is distressing to you, if you feel physiologically uncomfortable while you're watching the stream, pause it, get a glass of water, take a walk, Return later, fast forward if you need to, okay? I cannot do a trigger warning for everything in this game. So please, please, please take care of yourself. Know your triggers. There is no shame in pausing the game and returning to it later, especially if you're a VOD watcher. The VODs will always be here. So I'm not going to give a bunch of trigger warnings. There are a lot of flashing lights in the game. I do know that. So if that's something that you're sensitive to, just please be ready to look away from the screen. I will try my best to say when flashing lights are over, but I will not always remember to do it. But take care of yourselves while we do this run. Let's roll. And Jugger, I am not going, or uh, not Jugger, um, Sloppy, I'm not going to tell you where I ended because that'll be a spoiler. We're going to go normal. That seems reasonable. Harper, thank you for becoming a member. All right, Nomad. Roaming the Badlands, looting scrapyards, raiding fuel depots. Life on the road wasn't easy, but growing up in a Nomad clan has its perks. Honesty, integrity, and a love of freedom. Qualities that few in Night City possess and no amount of money can buy. Street Kid. They say if you want to understand the streets, you got to live in them. Gangs, fixers, dolls, small-time pushers. You were raised by them all. Down here, the law of the jungle dictates the weak serve the strong. The only law in Night City you have yet to break. Or the only law in Night City you have yet to break. Corpo. Few leave the corporate world with their lives. Few are still with their souls intact. You've been there. You've bent the rules, exploited secrets, and weaponized information. There's no such thing as a fair game. Only winners and losers. Nomad sounds up my alley. Honesty, integrity, and a love of freedom? Yeah, I'm in. I'm in. I'm thinking we go Nomad. And now I very much enjoy making characters that look similar-ish to me. 
I'm V. I'm V. All right. So let's see what we have available to us. How dirty do I want my face to be? Let's go with that one. Hairstyle. Actually, let's go hair color first. I want some sort of funky color here. Shit. Um. No. Mm. The purple hair? I want purple hair. There's gotta be purple. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now we're talking. Mona, thank you for the five bucks. Going from cowboy to cyber boy, Mick. From Yeehaw to Bebop. Exciting to see this transition. I'm excited too. Uh, ooh. All right. I don't want like long hair. If I can. What is this? This is a big yikes. Not into that. No. 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 Hate the bangs. Okay, that's not terrible. Hairstyle 18. We'll bookmark that. Ooh, some long, some long locks. Not into that. Two is not bad. Okay, so now we're back to one. All right, I liked eighteen. I, I like eighteen, and I like. Uh... Oh man, that mohawk's pretty sweet too. Mmm, we're going 18. We're actually going to go with that. I think that looks badass. All right, eyes. I'm not going to worry too much about this. That's fine. I want eye color. Yeah. All right. Eyebrows. Eyebrows look fine. I really don't even know how often I'm going to see my guy here. Nose is good. Mouth. This guy actually doesn't look too bad. Like I'm all right with how he was auto-generated. All right, we gotta have we gotta have a pretty badass facial hair though, and I want the facial hair to be similar to. All right, here we go. Bullseye Bronco, thank you so much for the three months of being a member, friend. I appreciate that. Clean shaven? I don't know that I'm into clean shaven. I love color. I need lots of color. Ooh, 
blonde actually doesn't look too bad. We'll remember that. Blonde looks okay. Blue is okay. The brown's not too bad. I'm not a big fan of the red. If there was like a super dark red, I'd probably be into that. I may go with the blonde. That looked pretty solid. Come on. Jesus, there's so many options. There it is. All right, we're going to go blonde. Cyberware. Uh, yes, I saw that the Knights won Super Chip. Uh, let's see. Uh, I like, I like that. It's nice and simple. Facial scars. Put one on my head. A little bit exaggerated from the one that I actually have. Face tattoos. Facial tattoos. You know I want tat. Oh god, I don't like that. Uh, nah, I do want piercings though for sure. Give me gauges. There we go. All right, like it. Piercing color. black yeah. teeth all right that's fine i don't care about that eye makeup no 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 nails really short because i bite them nipples i think my nipples look fine body tattoos i think my nipples look fine it's not really a sentence i ever thought that i would say on stream but here we are See, I hate leg tattoos. I don't really want my guy to have a leg tattoo. There we go. We'll go with that. Body scars. I don't think that's necessary. Body determines your raw physical power. In addition to allowing you to force open doors, each level of bodies starting from level three will add five health points, stamina points, increased damage with fists and gorilla arms by three. Intelligence determines your net running proficiency. Every level of intelligence will increase cyberpunk RAM capacity by 4%, increase quick hack damage by 10%, increase quick hack damage or duration by one. Reflexes. Reflexes determine your maneuverability. In addition to increasing your overall movement speed, each level in reflexes will increase your passive evasion from enemy attacks by one, increase crit chance by one, increase damage from mantis blades by three. Technical ability. Technical ability represents your technical know-how. It allows you to unlock doors and use tech weapons. Each increase in level will increase your armor by 5%. And cool! Cool determines your resilience, composure, and effectiveness in operating from stealth. Each level of cool will increase crit damage, resistance, stealth damage, reduce speed at which enemies detect you in stealth, and increase mono wire damage by 3. Alright, I'm inclined to do body. That seems pretty damn important. And then we're gonna go intelligence, reflexes, tech, cool. Nice evenly spaced. All right. Y'all ready for this? I'm ready. Oh, I'm so excited. Welcome back. My guest tonight is Lieutenant Sarah Kokoski, spokeswoman for the NCPD. Hi there. Welcome to the show. Uh, hello, Ziggy. Thanks for having me. I hope you made it to the studio without any issues. No carjackings or drive-bys along the way? <laughs> no, no. Uh, fortunately, the streets of Night City are getting safer every day. We've seen recorded homicides drop from 7,103 a year ago to just... Hold on, hold on. The streets are safe, you say, but what about the highways? I'm, I'm sorry? 
You heard about the shooting off the Route 1 exit, I trust. Half an hour before any response team arrived on the scene. Over 700 rounds fired in that time. What happened? Where are the gunmen now? Well, the NCPD is responsible for the safety and security of all citizens within city limits. Sarah, Sarah, but, uh, sweetheart, uh, don't one, feed us uh, some NCPD script. Be honest with our viewers. When will they finally be safe? When will they no longer need to carry a concealed weapon for a trip to the mall or to take their kids to play ball in the park? Uh, I, the, the NCPD is doing everything it can. <laughs> Look at that cop squirm. You said it was nothing serious when I came in. You said you were sure. Welcome to Cyberpunk 2077. First time in Night City. Pay close attention to the tutorials to learn more about the basic mechanics of the game. Or if you're already an experienced edge runner, feel free to disable hints. Guess I was wrong. Can always look for another shop where they won't ask a lone nomad why he's hugging the border. gonna pay you what we agreed not one anymore huh for that you can borrow my tools and fix it yourself all right maybe I will so I'm guessing he's probably part of my faction that's fine step aside what got any idea what to do <clears throat> mm. I'm thinking I'm thinking mm. and and your chirping is not helping I'll bypass the coupling. I'm gonna bypass the coupling and rig a hot wire. Compressor will run on and on. Could seize up. Did anyone ask your opinion? Get in the car. Yeah, did I ask your opinion? Bianca Pomelo. That's my lunch. Max Doc MK1. Okay. Cards. The Unification War for Gonks. The Unification War is the most recent armed conflict to take place in North America since the collapse, lasting from January 2069, nice, to June 2070. Although the Unification War is formally recognized as a war between the new United States of America, and USA and the governments of the free states, most scholars also classify the conflict as a corporate war. It is well known that the Noosa was backed by Militech hardware, personnel, and other resources, whereas the free states received the significant yet tacit support of the Arasaka Corporation. The Unification War is also sometimes referred to as the Metal War or Metal Wars in reference to the wide use of armored cavalry units, so-called Panzers. The bloodiest battle in the Unification War was the Battle of Ridgecrest. In just one day, at least 3,078 people were reported killed. North California and South California were on opposite sides of the war, allied with the Free States and the NUSA respectively, while Knight City maintained a position of neutrality. The Unification War ended when all parties signed the Treaty of Unification in Arvin, South California. Both sides claimed victory, the Free States emphasizing that they had preserved their independence and the NUSA boasting that they were closer than ever to reunifying a divided American people. The end of the Unification War, however, was not the end of the conflict at large. The leading AI analytics software predicts another hot war will likely break out by 2080 with 74% confidence. Professor Claire and Shays, thank you so much for the memberships. I appreciate that, friends. All right, I'll take some cards. Never know when we might have to... Play something. Soy paste. Applies the nourishment status, which increases max health by 5% and regen by 0.5 outside of combat. Alright. 
All right, let's get in this sweet car. Here's the scoop. The TX43 gives you the 15 times higher something something. All right, I don't know that I care about that. All right, let's get in the car. Okay, let's see what happens. Did I fix it? It's like I was telling you. I get it. You know more than I do. No. This guy's about to be passive aggressive instead of helping me out. Not shabby at all. Questions how long it'll last you. Yeah, it'll get me to Night City. I figure something else out there. Right. Looking for Jackie Wells. I'm looking for someone. Jackie Wells, have you maybe... Okay. So doable? It sure was. Satisficing that, not a solid fix. Might as well have used spit and duct tape. It worked. That's what matters. I did not slap him. All right, connect to the radio station. Give me something good. Give me something better than what's on mm -hmm. that radio. Antenna on this heap don't seem like it packs a punch. Not liable to him much. You don't say. Who's that creature over there? Oh shit! I had a sheriff. Mike, didn't know you had a customer. Uh, rolled in a few hours past. I I, I thought he'd at least called in. Don't you sweat it, Mike. We're gonna hash it out. Howdy, partner. Don't you know you owe the sheriff a word when you pay his town a visit? To tell him what's brought you here. Maybe even over a cup of coffee. Why don't you just say what you need to say and get to the point instead of being all passive, man? What? Suddenly all shy. Look, I'm just... My my bad, man. My mistake. I hadn't planned on stopping. A failed coupling forced my hand. Yeah. Always some failure high mistakes. Name's Andrew Jones. Probably her. Can't say I have. I can't say that I have. Served in spec ops during the last war. Silver showguns? Ring any bells? I, dude! Oh, okay, so we're already, you're already starting off on a terrible foot here, okay? We talked about this back in Detroit. When you are a police officer, you have to understand the power that you have in a given situation. And if you come up to a person like this as a police officer and you are cryptic and asking questions that I have no way of necessarily knowing the answer to while clearly hiding statements behind your questions, you are wielding your power irresponsibly. If you have something to say to me, say it. Be clear. Be direct. I, I, who, I don't give a shit who you are. You're a police officer, and as far as I know, that means you have authority over me, and I have to comply. Don't make my compliance vague. Okay? Tell me exactly what's going on here, why I should care about this. This is all very, like, planned ways to try to throw me off kilter so that he can maintain that sense of power in the interactional dynamic. He already has it. He's a cop. You don't have to do all this stupid... Extra shit. I can't say that it does. Don't like to get along, do ya? I guess you'd rather I lie to you then? That a nomad vehicle? Might have expected that. This is how you know that there's a power dynamic is that I could mouth off to this guy. Like I could say, do we got a problem here? And that's not exactly going to be safe for me to do. But your other alternative is to go along with something that clearly doesn't feel good. So that's how you know he has all the power here. I lose either way in my interactions with this guy. I'm going to try not to escalate it though, because... He's got a lot more power and I'm guessing a lot more weaponry than I do. I'll just fix it and go. I've no reason to linger. <sighs> nope. You sure shit don't. 
Nothing boils my blood like a fucking strain. Where'd your clan pitch camp? There is no clan. There is no camp. I'm here alone. Ain't buying it. Nomads always stick to their packs. My family's in pieces. That's why I'm headed for Night City. Makes you an outcast among outcasts. Sure as hell hope you'll be on your way before long. You're a real hospitable butt. No, we're not going there. I need to use your tower. I sold broadcast and comms tower on my way in. My antenna's down, and I need to radio someone. What you need's to hightail it out of here without another word. Ain't got no mind to see you drifting around these parts. Got it? I'm not, I, no, I'm not gonna escalate this. I made it clear. I don't want any trouble. Then stop looking for it and hit the road quick. Yeah, this guy, so this guy already has it in his head that I'm here to create trouble. And I am slave to countering something that he has already decided. So obviously this police officer has experience with nomads like myself. And so he's already constructed a story about me based on experiences and expectations he has for other people who share the same identity that I have. And that's a losing battle for me because I have to spend a shitload of time working against that perception and convincing this guy that I'm not what he thinks I am and getting back to square one so that he can learn what I am. So even though this is a police officer in this instance, this is something that all of us can learn, which is that if you go into a experience with a new person that shares an identity that you've seen represented in a certain way, don't automatically assume that that person fits the profile. You could acknowledge that that person shares that identity, but really listen and interact with that person and pay attention to what they have to offer instead of using all of your preconceived notions to fill in gaps there may or may not even be there. And that's what this guy's doing here, and that's why this is so uncomfortable. Add a power dynamic to it, and it gets particularly scary. All right, let's get out of here. Later, buddy. All right, go to the telecom tower. Some hallucinations, violent people. They know where it came from? Drugs, I heard. Started somewhere in Pacifica, they were saying on the news. See, I gotta keep moving because that cop's there, and if he sees that I stopped, I'm gonna be in trouble. So we're gonna we're gonna keep driving. car is pretty cool. Uh, all right, so we got to climb the rate, climb the telecom tower, and locate the control box. This rickety old thing. Man, we are in the middle of nowhere. I'm assuming. Okay, so there's Night City all the way in the background. Okay, cool. Climb. Control box. Can do. Piece of shit. Connect to the radio station. McCoy, it's good to hear your voice. Fee, 
Wish I could say the same. Why can't you? You abandoned the clan. I can't help you anymore. I never knew you to be so cautious. Try and loyal. Rules are rules. The system won't work without him. It can't. Nomads get the work in these parts because it's nomad turf. Wouldn't be a problem if you're still a backer. You should have stuck with them. Joined up with the Snake Nation like the rest. Snake Nation can kiss my ass. Okay, so that makes sense. So these are people that are clearly like outcasts from Night City. And see, everybody likes to talk about like freedom as being this really great thing that we all just want to be able to go and do as we please. But what so many people in that mindset fail to realize is that that equates to a shitload of chaos. Like you can't just have entropy. So even when you're in an outcast group that's trying to buck the norms of society or whatever you still have to create rules in order for people to know what to expect like humans do not do good when they don't have clear expectations and directives the majority of people are followers they're not creators of rules so us leaving this clan is obviously going to have ramifications because clearly these clans have created some sort of rule set that says you have to be loyal which makes sense because i'm guessing that if you were to put these clans up against society at large including the police they probably don't stand much of a chance if they're fragmented so as much as it's exciting to be free and do whatever you want outside the confines of a city there are still rules to follow and when you break those rules sometimes there's consequences for that are even more harsh in this case I'm, this guy's not going to do me a solid because i left this group and i don't even know what the history is of the group to know that that's obviously a big deal because that's generally how people in these types of situations operate I need your help. One last time. One last time. Again? <laughs> I have to find the client with my payload, but I don't know where he is. Hmm. Right place, right time. You were there? My car gave out. The electric coupling. It's a miracle I made it here. Maybe the client left a message. Could you check for me? Hmm. Sure. Last time, though. I mean it. Client's name? Jackie Wells. Huh. Actually left a message. He's waiting on a farm. Flicking you the geolog data. <laughs> Thanks, Willie. I owe you one. You do. Just don't get yourself killed. And don't call again. Yeah, so I can do him a solid. The one I owe him now is to listen to his boundaries and leave him alone. I'll do you a solid, buddy. I'm a therapist. I understand healthy boundaries. I watched Dr. Mick's YouTube video about how to set and maintain healthy boundaries. So I'm going to listen. I didn't listen to the cop's boundaries, but I'll listen to yours. Let me get out of here. view mirror road I'm not going. I'm not going off road this car is too nice feels like I'm playing Forza oh mr. Wells dog bobblehead. I gotta give me one of those. 
Should we name the car? I don't know. I don't even know how long we're going to have the car if it's even mine. I guess it is mine. We could call it the Doog. Because it's got a Doog in there. Drive the Doog. I like this. It's very Vegasy. Meet Jackie Wells. Oh, I was worried I'd have to turn to farming. What up, <laughs> homie? Yeah, sure hope you're here for me. Are you Wells? And Jackie, por favor. I'm V. Seems you have cargo that needs to be moved. Oh, where I'm from, you share a bit about your soul before you talk biz, eh? It's kind of like a custom. Or just good manners, you know? You're a man of principle? You need a backbone, cabron. At least you'll have that left when they've taken everything else. Why don't we start with you, then? Interesting little move there that he... pulled his gun out and just casually holds it. What I find really interesting about this is, like, it doesn't seem like that's abnormal at all. We got a little bit of lore, I suppose, from that, in the sense that, like, everybody has a gun when we were listening to the radio broadcast at the very start of this, before we started the game. But, like, I love how it's just like, yeah... Like, he could be, he could be holding, like, a pop can. But I, I, I get a sense that everybody is on edge. Like, if you don't know a person and they're not in your clan, they are a threat. And this guy doesn't know me. I don't know him. So, it's just interesting how he just kind of casually sits there holding his gun like that. NC native right here. Got Haywood in my blood. I've never been to NC. That doesn't mean much to me. So... Imagine a place where everyone's like your bro or sis. Or a distant cousin, at least. <laughs> I think I understand. You don't have to like each other, but it's family. That's Haywood. That and everyone's back in iron. And you? I guess one could say I'm from my own Haywood. You and me, we're gonna get along fine. How do you know that? Argo. What's inside? You sleep better the less you know. Got no idea myself, and that's a good thing. You don't know what we aim to smuggle? These are stolen corporate goods. Stolen? No. Oh, some gonk lost the crate. Some other gonk found it, passed it on. Now it's here. You know, butterfly effect or whatever. And there's no one looking for this crate? Ain't a problem if they look. Only a problem if they find it before it crosses the border, no? Can't argue. I would agree that sometimes it's better to not know. All right, fine. Let's put let's it in the car. load it in the car. Oh, well. By let's, by let us, I mean let's Started let you do it. You might not come. I got held up, and you weren't exactly easy to find. I decided to lay low, you know. The sheriff here looked like one grouchy motherfucker. Yep. As he is. All right, I want to grab this really quick. Vinyl record. The first nomad code. Excerpts from a history of the nomads by BB Pyres. One, protect and respect your clan and especially your family. You are worth as much as your word. Share with others in your clan. Respect the privacy and well-being of your clan. Never put your clan in danger. Always take honest pay for honest work. The new nomad code. Protect your family and clan in that order. Do not steal from anyone in your clan. Do not keep yourself that which may help another in your clan. Hard to imagine a group less inclined to wandering than farmers, but in fact they were the people who donned this age of nomads. Natural catastrophes, crops ravaged by bioplagues, armed conflicts, and martial law allowing corporations to speculate in privatized land, all this forced them into a life on the road. The first clans recognized as nomadic were the Aldecaldos and the Jodes, followed shortly after by Snake Nation, Thalos Nation, Folk Nation, Blood Nation, and Metacorp, a total of seven nations. Nomad nations are divided into tribes, which are subdivided even further into clans and families. 
family typically numbers between 10 and 100 people whilst the biggest nations can reach up to a million holy shit at first nomad activity was seen as anarchistic and subversive mostly as you can imagine by corporations who quickly realized they wouldn't be able to control them the biggest irony in all this is that it's thanks to the nomads that our cities were rebuilt after the wars and catastrophes that marked the first half of the 21st century after all families come together to build not destroy Surprised it didn't tell us the Fire Nation attack. Alright, Jackie. Thanks for holding that, buddy, while I read that. Ugh, what a fat ass. So something that I admire about this guy off the bat. So we had Is this is he is incredibly confident. That or he's at least feigning confidence. But there is a security almost in that. Like, this guy doesn't seem like he's afraid of me, which tells me that, like, I don't know that I necessarily have to be afraid or I could be very afraid. It's almost unsettling how he's just so casual about this. We've never met before, and he's just like, yeah, all right. So if he's a fellow nomad, I might assume that, again, he's as good as his word. It's kind of cool that we read those that excerpt. I don't know how much people follow that, but he's very chill. And it's, it's easy to talk to him, and it's kind of endearing in a way at the beginning. It's a good way to help people feel comfortable. He also could beat the shit out of me, very obviously, so. All right. All right, Jackie, where are we going, buddy? Do you have the manifest from the transport? Of course I do. But the fixer didn't give you the job deeds? He... he did. I was just making sure. I'm totally lying to him. Listen, friend. We're both professionals, ain't we? Hey, you, uh, sure you've moved contraband before? Why, are you nervous? Me? Ha! <laughs> ah, por favor. Well, uh, maybe a little. Order check, oh god. Car hand, car's handling great, Doris. Hey, border crossing up ahead. What now? Nothing. They'll scan us and check our papers. <sighs> okay. I'll do the talking. Customs declaration. Oh man. Wow, you have to go through customs to get into Night City? That's intense. You want to talk about you want to talk about how to separate folks out from the city. You create customs to get into it. That's wild. We're in the United States. <laughs> Jeez. Please direct your vehicle to the inspection area. All right, Jackie, stay cool, buddy. Remain in your vehicle. The security check will begin shortly. I got a real bad feeling about this. You know they'll notice if you're nervous, right? You have to calm down. Right, right, yeah. Give me the manifest, dude. Play it cool. Hand me the manifest. They'll need to see it. Grab these. Let me see. All about confidence. It's marked LOA. Perfect. What's that mean? Lost on arrival. It means the cargo is flagged as to be lost as soon as it crossed the border. Whoa. Something that you'd want to do here? Just... This is an obviously stressful situation by design. Do you work with known quantities again? The thing that is going to tip these guys off that something is wrong is if I overly pay attention to all the moving parts and the stress of the outside environment... If we play this cool and I focus on Jackie and I look at him and we maintain eye contact and we maintain a sense that we're in this together, we can co-build confidence here and it creates a united front against the guys that are going to come over to this vehicle, I'm assuming. These guys know how to get people to crack if they're smuggling contraband. 
And the easiest way for them to see that there's cracks is if me and Jackie are not on the same page and the emotion of the moment overrides our judgment. So keeping engaged with Jackie here, focusing on eye contact with him, making sure that we seem like we're casually having a conversation and like this is no big deal is going to be really paramount here. So they know we're smuggling. They're about to find out. The owner of the vehicle in the inspection area will report for further questioning. <sighs> Chingana madre. What now? Relax. It's all in line with procedures. It's all part of the plan. Hey, guess you know what you're doing, huh? He's taking my lead here. He's uh, he's obviously nervous. Probably for he's probably had an experience similar to this. We want the customs officer to turn a blind eye to our dubious docus. We'll need a sweetener. Do you have the credit chip with the bribe? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Forgot about that. Right. You forgot. Correcta, thanks for the 1999, friend. I appreciate it so much. I'll keep the engine running in case of a cock up. Do that. Enter the border security building. All right, play it cool here, Ryan. Proceed to customs without undue delay. Oh, I don't want to get hit by the car. All right, we're cool. Play it cool. If you're armed, place your weapon here. Pretty nice, right? Now, please report to room number two. You got it, buddy. Room two. Man, imagine having this guy's job. All right. Please sit. Okay. Papers. I know the rules. Everything's there. It might be. It might not be. We'll see. His whole job is to throw me off. What are you transporting? It's all in there. Everything? If anything's wrong, just say so. I'm sure we can figure it out. I haven't said anything yet. The question is, should I expect to find anything out of order? Classic. I guess I have to bribe him. There's one additional enclosure to the manifest. Ah, yes. Remind me, you drive for which nomad clan? I'll be honest with him. None. No clan. I drive for myself. Bold. And none too wise. You know, whenever I see someone like you, I'm oh so grateful not to be on that side of the table. Go on now. Your associate's waiting for you in the car. I was not going to escalate that. You gotta pick your battles to when you wanna talk back. There's not a lot of reason to talk back to him there. Again, you have to recognize at times when people are in positions of power and as, as alluring as it would be to give him shit, it doesn't serve me any purpose. It creates another unknown. So by letting him have the last word there, I allow him to maintain a sense that he's in control. The other thing I did there by disclosing the honesty that I'm not part of a clan is I absolutely made myself vulnerable for him. Because I'm sure that one of the things that these people on the border control are afraid of is just how tightly knit these clans are, right? Like we read, they're like a hundred strong, sometimes more. So if they mess with one, then there's a good chance that the clan's gonna come after him. When I say that I drive for myself, I have immediately made myself vulnerable. The honesty may be appreciated, but now he knows that I am only by myself. He can mess with me all he wants. 
So when he gives me shit for being on this side of the table, it is not in my best interest to say anything back to him because I can let him feel like he got the last word and like he has the power as I leave the room. And that is good enough for me. I don't have to see this guy anymore after I leave this room. It's not worth escalating and drawing attention to something that I do not need to have attention drawn to. Howdy, sir. Be careful with that toy. Thank you. And welcome to Night City. Those Appreciate it. Shits imagine Night City is some kind of paradise. What can you do? Young, naive, which is just a euphemism for ignorant. I love that they put the subtitles above the person who's talking. That's really neat. The Republic of Texas. <laughs> the new United States of America, the Western States, the Pacific Confederation, North and South California. Want? How about it? I just want to look at the map. Just chill, lady. Wow. Getting dark. What up, Jackie? What happened in there? What would you do like as V after that to cool yourself off if he had set you? How would you coach yourself through it afterwards? Focus on your breath. In through the nose, hold, out through the mouth. Just focus on controlled breathing. Direct your attention to things you can control. Um, that, that really, just engage your parasympathetic nervous system as best you can. Oh, Jackie's driving? All right. I'll tell you soon. We need to get out of here. Yeah, okay. Played it cool. We're good. Let's drive the speed limit, Jackie. Tell me what happened back there? <laughs> Let's say I have a bad feeling about this. Oh, happened a lot to you? Rarely. Smelling trouble around the bend? Drive, Jackie. Just drive. I don't know that I like Jackie being in control of the car it's right now. Away. This does not look good. Keep driving. Act natural, Jackie. Stop your vehicle immediately. Let's get out of here. No, Jackie! What are you doing? Oh god. Transporting contraband that is corporate property. I repeat, stop the Ooh, car. Jackie. Damn. Draw a weapon. Holster weapon. Alright. Oh shit. God. Jackie, keep moving, buddy. Jigga, jigga. Shoot the driver. Maybe. Maybe not. These cars must be bulletproof. Holy shit. All right, where are we going, Jackie? Whoa, shit. Gotta keep moving. Ah, those pendejos are stubborn. Yes, they are. Go, buddy. Thanks, amigo. Oh, shit. We lost them. Not sure my nerves can handle this. Keep driving. We can't stop here. Place looks deserted. I'm gonna stop here. Need to sort out a few things before. Dude, there's no way that those are the last guys. Fucking hell. What are you doing? You just wrecked my car, Jackie. The dog. We almost tagged our asses. That what you call smuggling? Chicago was supposed to go smooth. No problems. 
Uh, things like this happen. We're gonna keep cool. We're not gonna escalate. Calm down. Sometimes these things happen. This? What kind of shit happens? Border security tipped off the corporation that we have their cargo. What's the deal with these borderlies flipping us the finger as they fucking please? With no consequences. He took a risk. He assumed we didn't have a clan backing us. And he was right. <sighs> so what now? Yeah, I don't know, man. You drove us over here. I could ask the same question. Will you keep whining, or will we put a bow on this thing? Uh, I ain't gonna lie. I'm a bit light. I can't pay you now. I have something for you once I collect my scrap for this corporal crap we're carrying. Huh. And you just figured I would sit by patiently. Actually, I wasn't gonna pay you at all. I was just gonna bust ass and disappear as soon as we crossed over, but... Appreciate the honesty. You're all right. How do you know that? Yeah, I appreciate the honesty, man. I appreciate the honesty. Yeah, thanks. Vamos. Let's have a look inside this box. Worn samurai okay. cat. Toss a hat on. Probably helpful as a disguise, if for nothing else. I mean, granted, it's going to give me armor, but... Nah, I don't like that hat, but we'll live. Oh, man. I don't know that we should look, Jackie. You said, you said yourself it's not a good no. idea to know. Okay, so here's the thing. Jackie's not entirely wrong that not knowing what's in the box is probably good because if we ever got like interrogated or caught or something like that, we really do have a lot of leverage in the form of like it appearing to be truthful when we say we legitimately don't know what's in the box. If we open this box and we see something crazy, can we maybe make an informed decision? Yes. But we know what we have to do. We know we're screwed if we don't deliver it. I don't know that knowing what it is is a great idea. Unless what, because I, I, that box has got to be tagged. There's no way it's not. I don't know if your client's going to be happy getting an open package. It usually means trouble. Fuck the client. You got to start working for yourself sometime. No commission, no middleman. And I need to know what I'm selling if I'm going to try to find a new buyer. Oh, we're selling it to somebody else? Okay, well, if that's the case, then yeah, let's take a look. Aw, oh, shit. It says Arasaka on the crate. We are robbing some heavy hitters. And maybe we'll make some heavy money. Oh, my what? Miss. A real iguana. A uh, lesser Antillian, I think. Lesser Antill what? Yeah, I watched a thing on TV about them. Went extinct like 30 years ago. <laughs> They're from the Lesser Antilles. You come a long way, my scaly friend. What? You think you can make some money on it? Sure. Think it'll make us happy. Us? Yeah, partner. We'll go half seas. Any decent fixer will find a loaded gunk interested in a rare gem like this. It's kind of a shame, though. I always wanted a pen. Got the name Manny all thought out. <laughs> hey, by the way, you uh got any plans for what you'll be doing in Night City? Yeah, you're asking why for do you reason? ask? Because I got this feeling you got a lot of time and nothing to spend it on. And then see ain't a city that lets you get by without buddies. But don't you worry. Let me help you find digs. You gotta live somewhere. It's important to have people you can turn to. You know, like, uh, family. Maybe you'll find your own down in Night City. Thanks. Much appreciated. Hey, come on. It's nothing. They got chemistry, you and me. Be a crying shame I've to known wait. you for like ten minutes. Partner. Hey! Oh, what? Oh, cuddly little fucker. Holy shit! 
You know what, Jackie? You're not all bad yourself. <laughs> you don't mean that, Mano. Okay, partner. Time to grab the lizard and scurry out of here. Uh, no. Holy shit. Hello there, Night City! Stanley here with you, and we got another day ahead of us in this city of dreams. Ooh, I love this town. Love it like you might love a mother who popped you out on the steps of an orphanage once and now stops you to ask if you got a smoke for her. Every new day here means a hundred new arrivals. But only half these gods will survive a year. And that's if it's a good one. And why do these peeps come to NC? Well, to be street samurai like Morgan, Black Hand, and Waylon Boa Boa. The greater the risk, the bigger the bounty, kids. Or so they say. But you can only be a major league player for so long. The faster you live, the faster you burn out. If you don't get a bullet to the brain. Damn, we're getting a real bromance going. Good night, Jackie. And, uh, iguanas make me nervous. Know where you'll find most of them? The graveyard. What a montage. Matters not where you're from. Matters not where you start. What matters here is the walk you walk. In Night City. What a shirt. The city of dreams. The chick we're looking for is somewhere in this building. Probably crawling with the pendejos that kidnapped her. Eyes and ears open, all right? Speaking of which, got you a little something. Militech training shard. In case you need to uh, brush up on your dance moves. Down for some target practice in VR? Militech? Jack, we're talking classified military grade shit here. How'd you get it? T Bug. And our girl made a couple adjustments. Why? Think she knows better? Nah. Said it didn't suit her, uh, style. <laughs> You'll see what I mean. Sure. Why the hell not? Let's begin with basic combat training. This session will be recorded for subsequent evaluation. Okay. Uh, probably flashing lights, chat. This course is designed to reinforce your fundamental combat abilities and help okay. reflexes. Cool. The skills you gain here will help you survive, even excel on the battlefield. I will train you to be effective with firearms, to use stealth tactics to your advantage, and to hack into enemy networks. Cool. All right, that sounds excellent. Militech. Man, Militech oh, can't encrypt God. for shit. But they clearly got drilling jarheads in their blood. Now, station one, you maggot. Move, move, move. Okay. Hope you're ready to bust ass through this fascist playground. Hell yeah, I hate fascism. Let's blast through a tactical target practice program. You know, a little warm up. Aye, aye, Captain. M10AF Lexington. Yeah, I didn't think you'd find that too tough. Oh. What do you say we crank easy. it up a notch? Nothing. Not bad. But it's more realistic if the targets pack an iron. Ajax. Yeah, give me that. Quit standing around and take cover. Press C to crouch. Okay. You took a hit. Use a reanimator to patch yourself up. Woo! Head to the training area when you're good to go. I'm good to go. Oh, look. Brought some chooms with him this time. You know what to do, Pete. Dream work, Pete. 
stand on the platform and we'll move on. Hey, chat. Thanks for being here. I love having so many of you here watching this and hanging out. I hope you're enjoying this. I'm loving this. I'm like, just, I'm loving this. I'm on cloud nine right now. If you're watching the VOD, thank you for watching the VOD. I appreciate you all so much. Thank you for showing your support by watching my, thank you for showing your support by watching my streams. Uh, for those of you that become members or send super chats or buy merch or anything like that, thank you very much for your support of the stream. I'm really grateful for it. Feel free to leave me a comment. I love reading them. I don't respond to all of them, but I do read them. Y'all are fabulous. Seriously, thank you for being here tonight. Get moving. Kick more ass. Hacking's the next item on the menu. Might notice I tweaked the course material a bit. That's because you a badass. Militech. Job related items are highlighted in gold. Scan two such objects. Scanning highlights objects of interest in your surroundings and provides valuable information about them. How do I do that? That's not the right thing. Um, scan two objects. See? Oh, here we go. Okay. Robot. Server explosive. Surveillance camera. Computer. Hack hazards are highlighted in red. Hackable objects are highlighted in green. Objects useful in other ways are highlighted in blue. This training module will teach you how to apply technological tools to combat situate. Work a little hack magic on the screen to distract the guard. All right. So with Cyberdeck installed, your scanner provides an additional interface for selecting quick hacks and their targets. Use distract enemies to distract the guard. Navigate with the list of variable quick hacks. Okay. And then execute. Crash. Style over substance. Good. Now take him out quietly. Whoa, Patrick, thanks for the 50 bucks. Holy shit. Thank you so much. All right, all yours. Take him out. Bitch. Thank you so much, Never smart Patrick. Leave behind any trace of Good your Lord. handiwork. Especially the dead kind. Now pick up the body and hide it somewhere. And do. Oh, convenient trash can. You can hide dead and unconscious enemies in certain places. Doing so will help you avoid detection by other enemies. Sweet. Yeah. Okay. Now try to take them down in one slick move. Ready to try hacking some gonks in real time? Have fun! More advanced quick hacks allow you to use the environment or enemies to your advantage. While in control of the camera or turret, you can still quick hack other devices and enemies. What else is there? Breach protocol. To upload the ice pick daemon, you must recreate its code sequence by selecting characters from the code matrix. The characters you select will be visible in the buffer. Okay. Breach protocol always begins with the first row active. 
Select 55 code matrix. Selecting a character from the active row will then activate the column that it belongs to. Select 55 from the code matrix. The active area alternates between rows and columns. Select BD from the code matrix. Of loaded daemon, you must recreate its code sequence in that order. Now, detonate the grenade. Shut your brain down and follow orders in true Militech fashion. Under my wise command, you're a real champ. Take your spot on the podium. Well, thank you. Not too shabby. Militech's algorithms put you on a decent run. Got additional modules if you want to hone any other skills. Before you finish up, dealt out now. But remember, the street's not going to give you any hints or second chances. Noted. Is this stealth? Well, we doing this? Nah. Well, oh, all right. Stealth. Right. So first, let's shape up those stealth skills. Tag a target with your top school. Oh, cool. Okay. Enemies that are unaware of your presence will continue their routines. Pay attention to their behavior patterns and use what you learn to sneak. Away. All right. Nice and shitty. Get it on the first try. Oh, shit. Find cover quick. When you enter an enemy's line of sight, their alert indicator will begin to fill. Find cover to avoid detection. Find cover. Quick. Nice. Nice. Now, move slowly towards the exit. Stay out of sight. While crouched, you can move silently. Yeah, but that guy's going to be able to see me. Unless I'm able to keep line of sight. Back behind this. Nope, can't do that. Uh, I wonder if I can... Can I hack this guy? Oh. You know what? He's gonna see me. Unless I move quickly, I guess. Oh, I see. Come on, man. Turn around. We're moving, and we're moving, and we're moving. Nova, well done. On to the Hell yeah. Easy peasy. Keep an eye out for security systems such as turrets and surveillance cameras, which can trigger alarms and alert enemies to your position. Now the same thing, only with the camera. Hostile cameras that cannot that can detect you have an orange scanning beam, but friendly ones have green. Cameras will detect you if you enter their field of vision, but they do not register noise. Let's see. V, you're not a gonk brained Militech recruit. Get moving.
Run. Nice. nice work today. Just all right. Some advanced combat techniques for dessert. Then we wrap this party. Let's do it. Time to get down and dirty in close quarter combat. Take them down, but careful. Looks tough. Like a boss. Enter the arena. What up, big boy? Enemies at much higher level than you are marked with a skull and are able to free themselves from your grapple more easily. Defeating them is extremely difficult, so proceed with caution. Okay, that'll do. Now maybe we find someone closer to your weight class. Yo, what up, bitch? Cap. Come on. Come on. Come on! You ain't nothing, Iron Man. You ain't nothing, bitch. You ain't nothing. <laughs> Perform a fast attack combo. <laughs> Strong attack. <laughs> Continuously attacking your enemy will drain your stamina. Fast attacks and strong attacks have different stamina costs. Your current stamina is displayed as yellow bar at the top of your HUD. Your enemy is in a blocking stance. Strike him to see how your attacks affect him. Let's bump things up from easy to normal. This next fool can block your attacks. Yeah, well, I can block his. Fast attacks will not damage a blocking enemy. Only strong attacks can break their stance. General Andrews, good to see you, buddy. Oh! The old bit coming up now. Blocking blows instead of dealing. When you are hit while blocking, the attack will consume part of your stamina. If stamina drops to zero, your blocking stance will break. Your enemy's strong attacks can break your blocking stance in the same way that yours can break theirs. I ain't scared of you. Bitch. Do it again. Hit me again. Counter an incoming attack. Press the thing to block or getting hit. Now this fool loses his footing every time he swings. Use Ooh. it. Get in there and land a counter punch. Yeah. Double tap to dodge in the direction you wish. Ooh. I like that. V, want to see this fool punch in air next. Don't let him land anything. Whiff. Whiff. All right, let me kick his ass. He's all the techniques you learn. You've techniques to learn well to beat him. Mastering the way of the fool, young apprentice. I can teach you no more. Yeah. Let's move on to melee weapons. Grab a sword. Hell yeah. The only combat techniques you learn can also be used with katanas. You got nothing. Itch. Good. Now show me what you've learned. You are equipped with a range of weapons called the Cyber Deck. You will now face a mix of enemies whom you already encountered in training. Defeat them however you choose. Not even hard. Good luck, V. Thank you. That was fun. I like that. So, 
Not bad, huh? Now we can get down to biz. Hell yeah! Will Kako give you any tips and tricks for the job? I'm not your mother. Just do what I pay you for. It's easy work. Sha. Let's do this. Elevator. This way. Yeah, there's people sleeping in these garages. V! I'm coming, Jackie. Interesting haircut he has. Uh, apartments. Targets Sandra Dorset. Targets Biomon went mute a couple hours back. Suspected abduction. Target could have possibly flatlined already. Not sure you're in time. We're in time, Bug. We. Sure you're on phones, but that don't make you any less part of this squad. Squad. Charming. Bug, you could at least try to be nice. You want nice, supportive? Call a damn helpline. All right. I agree, Lexi. Looking for 1237. Target should be inside, but I got zero eyes on her bio mom. Fingers crossed it's not too late. Is that you? Ugh, I hate this life or death shit. Hurry. Try hacking the door. Think you can trip it on your own, V? Think I can trip it on my own. First, let's cover all our corners here. else I just want to make sure we're clear what's up ballistics good to see you buddy That's not a good sign. V. Hey, what's up, Jackie? Hold on. V. I hear you, buddy. What's up? I'm just trying to get money. Oh, are we fucking late? Is that her? Is that our target? Sandra Dorset's protected under Echelon 2 Corpo Immunity. Our girl's top shelf. This one's packing black market Zeta Tech repros. Typical back alley fix-ups. Not our lucky gal. Let's keep looking. Emergency on demand. How did it happen? When and why did we as a society decide that human life is a commodity, a luxury? My mother passed away at 45. She still had decades of life to live until it was all stolen from her by common pneumonia. If she had held even the cheapest trauma team policy, she could have been cured within an hour. But she couldn't afford it. Boy, that doesn't hit hard. My mother died five months before her scheduled appointment with our family practitioner. The idea of privatized healthcare is deeply ingrained in our public psyche. Already in 2020, there was whites. <laughs> oh, man. Already in 2020, there was widespread consensus that 500 euro dollars a month was a fair price for trauma team insurance. Health wasn't something you were given, it was something you earned. The private system may not be perfect, but there's no alternative, we thought. Bullshit. Now cross the Pacific Ocean to the USSR, where they also have highly trained medical technicians, high-precision nanosurgical suites, 
specialized antibodies, intravenous probes, and the list goes on. Emergency airlifts using modern AVs equipped with cyber with cryotonic chambers. They have those too. The difference then? They don't leave their people to die on the streets, at the store, in their homes. They don't let they don't force anyone to purchase their lives from a corporation as if they're the ones who own it. Public health care isn't some unachievable utopia, it's a reality. Trauma team, on the other hand, treats its policyholders as both potential patients to be treated and potential products to be bought. To save lives only because there's profit in it. A saved life is a returning customer. Client death can also bring in fiscal gains in the form of organ and implant resale, though of course in regulated smaller sum. Emergency care provider can't afford to give its managers reasons to deliberately kill off its clientele base for short-term windfalls. Surely, you ask, these medical professionals are also guided by their Hippocratic Oaths? Please. Woo! I'm going to use this as a uh, opportunity to say that privatized healthcare is indeed uh, a really horrible thing. And it's something that I, as a mental health practitioner, behavioral health practitioner, as insurance likes to call me, uh, I have to battle with this all the time. Uh, it is very obvious that insurance companies exist in the private sector to make profit. Thus, they do not want to spend money. They do not want to cover you. They do everything they can to make sure that healthy people are paying premiums and sick people are not included on their programs. Because if you utilize your insurance, you are seen as a liability. Insurance in the United States of America is what dictates people's access to health care. It's what dictates people's access to me. There are people who literally can't see me as a mental health practitioner because their insurance has deemed that my service is not something that they would like to pay for. It is horrifically atrocious and reading this in the game really strikes a chord with me because this is something that i deal with constantly i have to apply as a practitioner to be on insurance panels insurance panels have to decide whether i am going to end up costing them money by giving their clientele access to me think about how messed up that is it's really messed up when i started a business with my wife we were not allowed to have insurance for our business until we had an employee that worked at least full time at minimum wage because it was seen as a liability for my wife and I to be insured because we're married. Because if I got sick, then there's a good chance my wife gets sick and they don't want to pay double. That is literally what the person on the phone told me. That their entire goal as insurance companies is to minimize risk, not to take care of people. And that is really a sad state of affairs. So to hear that that's the case in this game, uh, we might look at it and go, wow, that's very dystopian, but it really isn't. It's happening now. On that cheery note, let's keep going. I got it, Jackie. I'm just trying to canvas the area and make sure we're good. like the simulations. Quiet down, Jackie. We don't know that he was the only one in here. This has got some real observer vibes, and I'm here for it. Cyberware usage and its side effects. Many people believe we live in a time when impossible has become an obsolete term. Ripper docs can replace nearly any part of the human body with artificial implants, from your big toe to portions of the nervous system. My years in trauma team, however, taught me that the impossible is still very much possible. Even now, as we enter the twilight of the 21st century, we as medical professionals have not been able to eliminate all of the side effects that come from incorporating cybernetic elements into our bodies. Of course, everyone is familiar with the mental disorder most commonly referred to as cyberpsychosis, but it doesn't end there. 
Although advances in medical science for the greater part of a century have reduced its incidence to a minimum, cyberware rejections can still occur in a small subset of the population. These unlucky few can experience a range of complications, but the following are most prevalent. 1. Immune response. The body rejects the implant, causing scar tissue to continue growing to the point that it causes pain and inflammation of surrounding tissue as well as possible interference with the tech's electrical circuits. 2. Psychological effects. Neurological implants have the potential to cause unpredictable change in the brain. Possible side effects include depression, apathy, hallucinations, and sudden increases in addictive behaviors such as gambling. Yikes. Also anonymous, that's ridiculous. 3. Implant over-dependence. Long-term use of certain synthetic body part replacements can change the brain's chemistry to make it accustomed to a particular type of implant. There are reported cases of permanent blindness after patients attempted to replace their Kiroshi optical implants with different models. In the face of these known risks, what should our outlook as consumers and medical professionals be? To deny ourselves cybernetic enhancements on the 0.5% chance that we could lose our vision forever or gamble away our life savings at the casino? The clear answer is no. Cyberware technology has elevated human biology to the point where those what-if arguments serve against our best interests. The best advice I can offer for minimizing your risk is to read the technical medical profiles for all cyberware you intend to purchase before you install it. Neurological implants have the potential to cause unpredictable change in the brain. Possible side effects include depression, apathy, hallucinations, and sudden increases in addictive behaviors such as gambling. Boy, you want to talk about a bind. It seems like these implants are pretty ubiquitous with daily life at this point here in 2077. And so if you're talking about taking on something that's almost a necessity and you're going to tell me that possible side effects are depression and hallucinations and addictive behaviors. That's pretty scary. And then you realize in 2021, that's this. This gives you access to social media. Social media has been shown time and time again to increase depression and anxiety, particularly in teenagers. As technology becomes more integrated, we have a lot more access to information and poor representation. And people are constantly at odds with, do I deal with the psychological effects of being able to carry my entire world in one device at the expense of the anxiety that I'm going to experience that comes along with that? Or do I, but it's, it's necessary. We have to have it, right? When we went into the, when the pandemic happened, Kids had to have laptops in order to be able to access school. You have to have technology at this point. This is so ubiquitous with our daily living, yet it contributes to a lot of psychological distress for people, and it's a real bind that many people find themselves in. Put in all the controls you want, but these devices are designed for us to use them as much as possible. So these neural implants are just an exacerbated form of phone. <laughs> Where'd you go, buddy? On your toes. More bodies incoming. They're almost on you. Please fuck these reapers. I find a single fire fire. Score big on that three massacre. Going loud, baby. Jackie. Jackie, get out of my line of fire, dude. No way. Not me. Shit. 
point for you. Oh shit. That guy's powerful as shit. on the other side of the game. Just gonna grab some stuff real quick while I can. This grenade. first. That was intense. And a shotgun. Beautiful. Classic corporate pants. I ain't no corpo, but I'll take them. Did you say that you prefer loud and aggressive play styles over sneaky and stealthy? Uh, no. I think it just depends on context. Like, I like sneaking around a lot, but uh, in this case, sometimes going in guns blazing is really feels like the way. You know? Cool shoes. All right. <sighs> wow, I can take this gun. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> Badass. Pain editors and mortality rates. Introduction. The implant known widely as the pain editor is cyberware that reduces or even entirely eliminates pain. That's not good. Pain is useful. It has enjoyed unwavering popularity for years among certain circles in Night City, the most devoted and arguably most valuable of which is mercenaries. Using this test group that the Zeta Tech, that Zeta Tech conducted the following research. The pain editor is a neural coat processor that inhibits the signal sent from the nociceptors to the parietal lobe of the brain, thus preventing feelings of pain in the user. Note, some models also reduce symptoms of fatigue. Beneficial effects caused by the pain editor are in some ways similar to the symptoms of hypo hypoesthesia, 
including greater resistance to physical forms of torture and the ability to ignore pain from several wounds, which can allow the user to continue to perform beyond natural human limitations for a brief period. However, some studies have reported that the pain editor can yield a range of undesirable side effects. For example, in the heat of battle, some users are unaware of the severity of their wounds, which causes them to continue fighting without realizing they're dying and require immediate medical attention. The statistics support the theory that lack of negative reinforcement may cause users to continue fighting when the rational strategy would be to retreat and escape death. Since 2020, the, the mortality rate of pain editor owners is above 60%. In this report, I address the question of how to better protect Zeta Tech clients from avoidable death while using our pain editors because we want people to pay for them. Uh, pain is a natural feedback mechanism in the body. It is essentially something, it creates a unpleasant experience so that you know to attend to what's going on and to potentially get away from it. Like pain is super useful emotional pain is also super useful which is well, in the same way that physical pain numbing is not useful and creates problems for people because then they don't know what they're working with and can further hurt themselves emotional dampening of pain is also problematic because if you dampen one emotion you dampen them all and when you dampen your emotional experience, it means that you don't necessarily know what you're working with, which means you may engage in behaviors that are more destructive to your emotional psyche. So when we talk about pain in a physiological sense, it's also important to talk about pain in the form of emotional pain. These are all just feedback mechanisms that are designed to be there for a reason. It's... It's been created through evolution as a way to help us survive our environment and to know how we're being impacted by it. So numbing emotion can be a really good short-term way to survive something, but in the long-term, if you're using it as an adaptive coping strategy, it may become a maladaptive coping strategy as you continue to engage in behaviors that perpetuate the emotions that you're suffering. Yeah, this is cool. This is really cool. Is this get some money? I want this money. Love my shoes. Shoes are badass. Woo! Low straw woven trilby. Hell yeah, give me that. Nope, can't do that. Cannot do that. I'll take that though. Can't can't do the fedora. I draw the line at fedora. Lot of euro dollars here. I like that there's a lot of stuff to read. In early the day the tower fell, in early August 2023, a single event would change the course of history. Although it fell against the bloody backdrop of the fourth corporate war, the global media still fed on the story for weeks. Could you blame them? A group of terrorists detonated a nuclear bomb, blowing Arasaka Tower to pieces. The terrorist warning came too late. Not all the tower's employees could be evacuated. The blast itself killed and wounded thousands, while countless others died from radiation sickness. How did the biggest terrorist attack in the 21st century happen? Who is behind this catastrophe? To find the answers, we'll need to first understand the context of that era. The early 2020s was a period of unrest for Night City, and anti-corporate sentiment was at an all-time high. In the epicenter of the city's lawlessness stood the Atlantis Club. It was seen as an island of resistance against the powers that be, primarily mega corporations like Militech or Biotechnica, though a special place in hell was reserved for the Arasaka, the Japanese arms manufacturing Zaibatsu that held the most influence over Night City. The kinds of people who frequented the Atlantis felt that corporations had hijacked the future and turned people into consumer slaves, and ironically, 
deprived of the two things capitalism loved most, freedom and choice. These people called themselves edge runners. They positioned themselves against the corporate world order. They declared their own freedom in opposition to the status quo. Deprived of any peaceful way to meaningfully change what they called the system, they reached for more radical methods of self-expression, and these people were no strangers to violence. Uh, that's what people do. When people don't feel heard, they result to means that are... force you to get their attention. Uh, I will actually... Believe it or not, I'm going to use a article about terrorism to make a point about, like, why affairs happen. Uh, usually affairs happen in relationships because there was a lack of communication about things that a person was not uh, okay with in the relationship or that the relationship was missing, or those bids for attention were ignored. And eventually, sometimes people will engage in things like affairs as a way to escalate to a point that it has to get their partner's attention. We all do this. Humans are really good at escalating to a point where we feel heard. And when we perceive that we're not heard or validated, we will often go to the ends of the earth to get heard or shut down completely. But when people get really sick and tired and notice that freezing and flying doesn't work very well, they will fight. And it's why it's in everybody's best interest to listen. All right, life lessons in Cyberpunk 2077. Who knew? Oh shit! Fucking Christ! Uh. Shit, V. I mean, I got a stomach of steel, but this, ah, oh, this, I wasn't made for this shit, you know. Chop shops, what they do to people. Fucking scab psychos. No more jobs like this. Te lo juro por mi madre. V. I think I got her. Got our target. We make it? She alive? About to find out. V, Jack and Tor Biomon. Need to know what we're dealing with. Oh, this does She's not look good. She's in a tub good. of ice. Crammed in with another. Fuck. Like slabs of meat. Keep it together, V. If she survives, she won't remember a thing. Tiny scar on the subconscious, that's all. And people who live through shit like this get panic attacks. I don't ever know why. You'd be sipping a glass of ice cold water and suddenly your hand's shaking. Ooh, ah, man. Okay, I hate that for people that deal with that, but that is quite literally how trauma works. Okay? Your brain takes all the environmental stimuli that it associates with the trauma and it registers it and says, I will never let this happen again because this was dangerous. And in this case, that subconscious association to ice water is dead on. Very well, later on, if you don't realize that that was part of the environment, but your brain filed it away, you could drink ice water and experience anxiety and even have a panic attack because your brain has registered that as being associated with the trauma. And as a result, it will often employ the override or the coping strategy that it used when the trauma initially happened to protect you. So if she, she may dissociate or she may have a panic attack, we don't know necessarily how it would happen, but that is spot on in terms of how the brain registers trauma. So when T-Bug says, Oh, it's just a mark on the subconscious. And then V comes back and says, yeah, but this kind of shit really fucks people up because they have these latent experiences sometimes. We would expect that to very much be the case. I don't know how much of your biology and your brain these chips can override. And it seems like from that anecdotal experience, you can't override all of it. But that's quite literally what happens with trauma. So that's a neat little tidbit in here. That's interesting, Blair. V, Jack into her biomon. We need to know what we're dealing with. All right. I guess I don't really know what that means. You good, Jackie? You got us covered? Because I'm about to do something crazy. Jacking in. Bio monitor panel. 
Sandra Dorsett. NC570442. Trauma Team Platinum. Platinum? Shit. Trauma should have swooped in if she sneezed. Guessing they jammed the transmitter, Sig. Looking at a hacked biomon, firmware reconfig, or a neurovirus. Carajo, T-Bug. You ain't seeing this place. This is tubs, ice, hooks, and cleavers. Hmm. Scott Muncher's hack, huh? Got an idea. Check her neural cord. Find a shard? Yeah, pull it. That'll be what's muting the biomon. Is that even safe? Can't we just get her out of here? We found her still breathing. Can't lose her. We need that biomon working. Checking for hemorrhages, whatever. Find that shard and gank it. A lot of credit to T-Bug here for being incredibly directive. She gets to be aggressive here because she very clearly knows what's going on and we're simply drones that are acting as an extension of her arms. And so I love that T-Bug is being directive and clear and using like short sentences and not giving us any information that we don't need to have. Really good leadership in a crisis situation that's calling for quick action. So big, big gold star to T-Bug for the way that she's handling this. Found the shard. We're moving now. Check the biomass. Anything changed? Greetings, Sandra. If you are conscious, assume recovery position now. An emergency evacuation unit has been dispatched and is due to arrive at your location in 180 seconds. Wow. Biomon claims trauma will be here in three minutes. Your premium plan will cover 90% of the projected costs of your rescue and treatment. Imagine! Oh my god. Oh, okay. You don't really even have to imagine this. This is what happens to people. Oftentimes when people are sick or in trouble or in crisis and they have to consider going to the hospital in the United States, the very next thing that they think about is cost. Back in June, when I had to be hospitalized and almost died, I was hesitant to want to call an ambulance because of how much it would cost. So that chip saying that uh is wild because it acknowledges to some extent that money is going to be the thing that a person is worried about but also why should we care about cost in a moment like that like think about how crazy that is that you have a you have this insurance company or this trauma module that basically the first thing that it tells you is how much this is going to cost. It talks about how corporatized healthcare is. That is gross. That should make your stomach turn upside down. If that doesn't make your stomach turn upside down, I, I, I don't understand it. Holy shit! I hate everything about that. Pobrecita. Let's get her off that ice. Jack, look sharp. Not done yet. Don't know who's out there. Locked and ready, hermano. Do your thing. Oh, fuck. He's flatlining. B, need to know what's going on. Jackie, air hypo. Fuck, this is bad. Hey, catch, vato! <sighs> I think, holy shit, it worked. Fuera, cabron. Get her outside. Oh, shit. Fuera, get her out. Terrace. Militarized emergency service. Holy shit. Place the patient on the ground. Yes, sir. Holy shit, this is terrifying. Five steps back. Now. Holy shit. TT-133 to control. Patient NC-570442 secured. Stimulus being administered. 70 milligrams dopamine. 110 norepinephrine. 800 for grenadine. Let's get out of here. That'll be a good 
Uh, the quick answer, Celestial, is you don't. Shit show's over. Cutting my wires now. See you in the near future. Oh my god. Listen, Mano. I got this thing. Mind if I borrow your wheels? Hmm. I got a day with Misty, but I can't take the metro. How's it gonna look for me? Only be hanging, Jack. But don't get used to it. And say, I guess it'll probably look realistic given what your your circumstances <sighs> dictate feet. that you can afford. Thank you. How about I drive you home, huh? She's all yours. I'm beat as it is. Oh, almost forgot. She can Wakako in the hollow. Tell her the job's done. <clears throat> v, how did it go? Our client is alive and well. Relatively well. Trauma team took her off our hands. She'll recover. Splendid. Your payment awaits you. Ready to come and grab whenever you like, even right away. But I guess home is the only place you wish to be now. The NCPD has surrounded Watson. The district is closed. If you're to make it past the cordon, you must move fast. Thanks for the heads up. Swing by to see you later. Words out the NCPD is gonna put Watson on lockdown. If I'm gonna sleep in my own bed tonight, we better put it in fifth. Leave it to me, Mano. I'm driving. Punk Aramid Vest. Nice. Love that. Yeah, pretty much is, Sean. Oh, that's right. You're driving, eh, Jackie? Okay. So in a, 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 you can get a feel for what a society prioritizes by who they revere. So Jackie starts talking about all these people that probably own Matt, like all these corporate it, like all these corporations that own everything. So in a place like this, where obviously like money and influence and technology and all that stuff is the thing that the society thrives off of, the people who create those things are going to be revered. So we get some insight a bit into the culture of this place by seeing who Jackie is interested in. And if you look culturally at like who gets the most airtime who has the most influence who gets the most representation you see what a group's values are so we see people desiring to be ceos people who run these giant corporations people who make money and have influence we want to take it to 2021 we put a lot of stock on celebrities but who are celebrities people that we see uh, in movies, people who are huge on Instagram. Like we look at people who have widespread social media influence 
as being people that folks see as role models and aspire to be as athletes, right? Like you get a really good idea for a culture's preferences, if you so to speak, by looking at who they revere. Just a little bit there that's kind of interesting to hear him talk so reverently about these people who started these companies that are absolutely dicking over people like him and I. Let's grab a tight bite. What do you say? Jackie, they're locking down Watson and Murphy. Oh, shit. Right? You know it. Put you to sleep. Beg your feet. Take a spoof. Pop them a job. I don't like it. I don't want that bit. Scum! You hold that full down! Fucking drive, Jackie. Come on, feet! Can't keep her steady! Got him. Itch. <sighs> Scratched your baby up pretty bad. Sorry, V. It's okay. You can wait. Let's just focus on getting home. Know that I want Jackie to drive much more. Damn, pulling out all the stops. Oh, jeez. What does the lock count to for the nerdist? Necessary security measures. Officer, ma'am. Damn, are we ever lucky we ran into you. Really? What's it that makes me so special? A uh, heart of gold? Because only somebody with a heart of gold can understand just how much I need to get back to my girl. Your girl? Uh-huh. I'm gonna be worried sick if I don't show up. I mean, I'm trying to be a stand-up guy. She's giving me a chance. Waiting. Mm, that's a shame. Let them through, but they're the last. Nice. Okay, on your way. You have a good evening now, officer, ma'am. I didn't want to step in there because it makes us look too desperate. Nice job, Jackie. So you can be nice when you feel like it. When am I not nice? Um, always? I'm always never not nice. Thanks for being here, chat. Almost at your place. What about you? Not likely to make it back to Haywood now. Kill me? They'll let me through. You sure about that? Oh, yeah. I'll play nice guy. So 
Tell Misty I said hi. I will. I will. Enjoy my car. Delame, leave your problems at the door as the guy runs. What is this? So. Oh, this is the stuff that I. Handguns, assault blades. Let's go. Handguns, blades, assault. Eagle Eye reduces the time to aim down the site with rifles and submachine guns by 10%. Yeah, I'll take that. Tribute points. All right. All world insurance. First 80 gigabytes free of charge. Revere courier services. Security you can trust. Oh shit. Real man smell. Nicola! Taste the love. World Report. I'm Jillian Jordan. Scientists from Biodyne Systems have announced a breakthrough in the fight against multiple sclerosis. MS is one of the few diseases that cannot be cured by replacing the affected tissue with implant technology. But the experts at Biodyne have created nanites that, when injected into the spinal cord, provide long-term uninterrupted repair to the neural tissue. The cost of this cutting-edge therapy treatment has been listed at 700,000 euro dollars per month. For the second per month? week, the landfill inferno in the remnants of Atlantic City continues to rage on. The 10,000-acre dumping ground ranks among the world's largest and contains both toxic and biological waste. Already, seven firefighters combating the blaze have died, and another 40 have suffered from severe burns and toxin exposure. The Swedish Academy Award for Literature has announced its latest recipient, Virginia Granchester, citing her most recent book, In the Shade of an Apple Tree, as a treasure of this generation. Granchester, who is an AI created by Raven Microcybernetics, has been lauded for several of her works over the years. Her first novel, Requiem for a Samurai, which was published in 70 languages simultaneously, sold over 3 million copies. In the Shade of an Apple Tree is a drama set in 20th century Ireland and is already considered a masterpiece of post-collapse literature. This has been your World Report. Thank you for tuning in to N54 News. Jeez. Good evening, Night City. My first guest tonight is the president Look, of the Church of Elmer. Forgot earlier. A runner I know has something you could probably use. Zip in your deeds. Praise be to thee, our Father in heaven. And our second guest is Karina Lee, host of the Chip In program, which promotes the use of cybernetic implants. How's life treating you, beautiful? Can't complain, Ziggy. Thanks for having me. Now, 
I'd like us to talk about the most exclusive and highly sought after implant on the market today, Arasaka Corpse Relic. But maybe we ought to make sure our fair audience is up to speed. Karina, what is Relic exactly? In a word, if you could. In one word? I'd say immortality. Immortality? Really? That's right. Relic allows you to transfer the consciousness from a dying person, finding a new home for their soul on a transferable chip. This person, they'll never leave your side, a companion forever with you in your own consciousness. Just a child, child, think for a moment about what you're saying. This relic is an abomination that feeds on human misery. It is an unnatural likeness, a golden calf born by false prophets. Arasaka speaks of preserving the soul, but they can promise nothing more than a heartless, mindless algorithm speaking with the voice of the departed. What's more, this technology is just another tool of coercion and corruption. Only the wealthy and powerful elite will have access. And they will pay any price in exchange for a chance at this so-called immortality. Well, that is true that Arasaka Corp has specifically limited access to the relic in order... Your promise is a lie. An evil lie. Motivated by greed and... <laughs> now that is rich. Oh, wow. They cut his mic. Me. False promises, greed, a lust for power. Why, it sounds an awful lot like a church to... What? How dare you? Do you not promise a life after death? Do you not charge funeral fees to a family in mourning? Maybe the Reverend is just afraid of some healthy competition, huh? <laughs> competition? You believe everything in this world can be counted, measured, rationalized. And wouldn't we be right? We can construct artificial brains, create new consciousness. But I ask you why? What does that give us? Are we as a people on this earth any happier for it? You claim that this relic gives eternal life. But all I see is an eternity of suffering. Rather than say goodbye, we haunt ourselves with their voices, their presence. What do you folks think? Who holds the truth? Is it Ms. Lee or maybe Reverend Kohler? That is up to you. Send Kohler or Lee to 7892. Oh my god, really? And enter your name for a chance to win tickets to this year's playoff. <laughs> this guy literally, they literally just made the reference point. You quantify everything. We've already started to do that. God, man, this, this game is an amazing commentary on the present despite taking place so far in the future. We've already started to do that. How many how many likes did my tweet get? How many likes did my Facebook post have? How many upvotes versus downvotes did I get on my recent Reddit post? Have I been ratioed? Like we YouTube literally took away quantified dislikes. Um like I we have quantified everything and we've quantified our social capital so to speak and that's created a lot of problems for people because now we look at things in terms of social reinforcement and this show is literally doing that i mean it's the american idol version of like everything put your votes in show these folks who socially has more reinforced support and all this does is further create polarization instead of integration because now when you vote for one person, you have basically staked your claim. You have reinforced that that person in isolation is a person that is correct. And so if that person gets more social reinforcement, more quanti like more quantity, they are deemed to have better representation and better idea than the person with less, even though that may not be the case. And what these shows or what these scenarios would be better off doing would be do you find yourself more oriented toward lee or the priest or do you think they both have a point and we should continue this conversation and work together 
Of course, that's not as exciting for ratings. That doesn't get people talking. It doesn't spin engagement, but it's a lot better way to be. Like, it's amazing how this kind of thing is a commentary on what's going on today. And yes, Hellraiser. Until next time, Night nice City. Toodles. Jeez. How's it going? Fuck this country. <laughs> yeah, cowboy. Oh, stupid gates busted again. Third time. Paid to get it fixed the last two. Gotta be some kind of scam. You can have a word with the super. Oh, yeah. Interesting outfits in this world. Damn. It's a nice ass apartment. New release brain dances. What's up, BD Maniacs? Hungry for a new emo rush? Then check out the latest word from the freshest BDs on the market. Foreign body. The body is everything. There's nothing else. It is you. It's also just a tool for your mind to interact with the world. What would happen if this tool tried to live its own life? What if it tried to kill you? Though not a particularly original addition to the thriller genre, this brain dance featuring Luke Polar is still a solid experiential ride. The fear of disobedient implants has been around since pirates were walking around on peg legs. Well, maybe not that long. As a result, the trope has been pervasive in film, brain dance, and urban legend alike. Still, Foreign Body borrows some of the genre's best elements while still incorporating just enough new stuff to be the mix to keep it interesting. After all, it's not every day you see the world from the perspective of a sentient arm. Maxwell's Rehab This brain dance season has been chock full of horror, but this one stands out from the rest. Always phenomenal, Maxwell Ramirez is pushed to the brink of cyberpsychosis so we can relive his return to normalcy. The title offers a tone of optimism, but don't let that fool you. You will relive Maxwell's slip into psychosis, the heartbreak of his wife, and the gradual reintegration into a world that is now far different from how he left it. BD is a must relive of the season. It's not for the faint of heart. Badlands Raid. At last, a BD for those looking for something a little lighter. Badlands Raid is a remake of the 2023 classic, which is an innovative tour de force of the time. Those of you unfamiliar, the pilot or the plot revolves around an ordinary, boring guy who accidentally gets tangled up in a nomad ambush on a Zeta Tech convoy. I won't spoil it because even though the main plot hasn't changed in 54 years, most people these days probably don't know the ending. What I will say is this. Remake's creators have introduced a few modern twists into the story that should make for a pleasant surprise to classics lovers and newbies alike. Alright, so I guess, um... I guess brain dances are probably like chips you put in your brain or something. I like that pillow. I got taste! Funky monkey. Oh, dick and whiskey. Hell yeah. Messages. Mega Medicine Lottery. Attention, Mega Medicine Lottery. Buy two tickets, get the third for free. Heart, heart, heart. 
Thousands of prizes are still available. Drugs, reanimators, primary care appointments, surgery vouchers, blood screens, cyberpsychosis vaccines, Ripper Doc referrals, and our grand prize, a one-year Trauma Team Premium Package. Hurry while surprise last. supplies last. Your neighbors already have their tickets. Buy yours now. Holy shit. Literally a lottery for medical treatment. That is awful. Also, Benita, thank you so much for becoming a member. I appreciate that, friend. Holy shit. Penis nanogel scam alert. Warning, scam alert. Do not click on any emails with ads for a penis enlargement nanogel. This is a scam. Ordinary gels cannot stimulate new cell growth. The only tested and proven method for penis enhancement is still the Aerosex hormone treatment. Our scientists at Aerosex have developed a formula that will dramatically increase the length and girth of your penis in only seven days. Join the thousands of other satisfied customers and order your kit today. I didn't believe it would work, but I was desperate. I only had a week to get my penis big and I knew Mr. Stud wouldn't cut it. Fortunately, Aerosex did the trick and I've still got the nail marks on my back to prove it. Thanks, Aerosex. Richard Towers, real customer, verified penis growth. Order now while supplies last. <laughs> I only had a week to get my penis big. <laughs> Alert, you've been attacked. Warning, malware detected. Your computer has been attacked by three daemons. Our system detected two attempts to obtain your personal data, one attempts to corrupt your neural processor. Immediate action required. Our quick threat neutralization software can prevent identity theft and implant, hij implant hijacking. Remember, hostile net runners can infiltrate your nervous system and force you to commit terrible crimes, such as fraudulent bank transfers, assault, theft and or armed robbery, suicide. Protect yourself, click the scan now button. Our sophisticated anti-daemon software will eliminate all threats immediately. If you do not scan in the next five minutes, 17 seconds, your operating system may suffer irreversible damage. Protect yourself now. Jeez, that's terrifying. That that's the kind of thing that people could even fall for. It says a lot about, uh... Holy shit, is this like the Grand Theft Auto V, like, stuff in your phone? There's so much here. Asbestos found in Militech implants. A faulty batch of Militech limbs has led to a mass allergic reaction among royal residents. All signs point to the trace amounts of asbestos mixed into implants. Militech heads in the night in Night City have declined to comment on the issue. And they're afraid of the truth or subscribe now for $14.99 a month. What kind of money do I got? This page cannot be displayed. God damn it. God damn it. Everything's a subscription nowadays. Take a shower here before I go to bed. All right, real talk. Do any of you stand in the shower like this? I don't think in my entire life I have ever put both hands against the wall like this unless I was like drunk. And I can only think of like one time in my life that I ever was drunk and took a shower. <laughs> when you're going through it. <laughs> I, I took a shower fully clothed. <laughs> oh, God. The mildew, man. Hopefully my implant can get rid of that. I also apparently lay on my bed very weird. Act one. Sleep? Ah, no matter. Time you got up. 
I might have caught something when I jacked into that corpo's biomon. You know, uh, neurovirus, sir. I need to see Vic. Let him tell me what's got my head reeling, my stomach churning. Okay, let me take you. I brought you a ride. Throw on some threads, meet me downstairs. Beautiful day. And now, a shout out to all the low lives over at the Atlantis. Ladies and gents, here's that all time classic from Johnny Silverhand. Everyone sleeps on their bed sideways in the future. Yeah, apparently. I don't even stand. My balance is literally potato, so I have a chair I sit at 99% of the time to keep myself from falling. That's not a bad idea, DL. I ought to put a chair in my shower. All right, let's get out of here. What up, neighbors? Regina Jones. Hey, V. Regina Jones here. If you're looking for work in Watson, give me a call. How'd you find me? How'd you even know my name? I know where to gather my intel. Could even call me a collector. Later, V. Okay. Okay. Hey, V. Regina Jones here. I heard you're looking for work in Watson. Just so happens I'm one of its main employers. If you don't want to waste the talents, those talents of yours, check the gigs I sent you. Do good work and there's more where that came from. I'll be in touch. Okay. What up, homie? Mm-hmm. So, what? You embarrassed? No, that ain't it. What is it, then? Just uh, later, all right? I got a clusterfuck on my hands right now. You're worthy. So you are embarrassed. Fucking gong piece of shit. Oh, this is cool. If I can sell, sell junk. That's neat. Okay, I like that. Well, you dump all your shit in there and be done with it. NCPD, open up. We got a call. We're here to help. We know you're in there! Sorry, sorry, sorry! What the hell was that? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm leaving. In the event of accident, Didn't mean to disturb you, officer. Jeez, it's like total daytime and you can't even tell in here. What up? Shit, come on! Oh, no, no, no. 14 is nothing. It's just not enough. Wait, you mean 14 a day? No, that, that's different. Better. Need to discuss it. No. The fucking smell. True. Sweet, it is not. Chum, you could boil shit in piss and it still smell better than this fucking dump. Very descript. Hey, yo, B. How about a round or two? What do you say? How you like my new punching bag? Just gave me a next gen ass whooping, he did. Curious to see how he handles the likes of me. <laughs> so how about it? Where'd you get him, Fred? Off the street. 
saw him looking up at me with these big, sad eyes. So I took the poor pup in, fed him, clothed him. <laughs> nah, for real. He's a military fox. Got a sweet deal. And a truma mine tossed in a few upgrades. Now, here we are. How's it going? Fight's about to start. Not gonna watch, take notes. Malone versus Hernandez? <laughs> nah. Our chrome friend here don't watch TV. Don't talk, neither. The only way he communicates is with them fists. Let's do this. Hell yeah. Keep that head moving. Let's go, stupid bot. Not anymore. Skull's taking too much of a beating. Reflexes ain't what they used to be. There's ways of fixing that. Karenzikov should do the trick. Rather dish out my eddies for something else. It's time I started taking it easy. You mentioned something about fighting. Mm. I've seen you landing blows in the ring. You've got sharp instinct, good edge. You can go far. Especially if you get chipped. These fights, let's just say they aren't legal, but very lucrative. Yeah, lucrative for who? You or me? Both of us. I get a small percentage of the total winnings, you know, as your agent. You get the rest. Oh, I get it. You want to get rich off my blood, sweat, and tears. Hey. You gotta make a buck somehow, right? At least I'm giving it to you straight. You're only as good as your word. The city. You choose where you want to go. Put down your eddies and start swinging. You win, you take home the pot. Manage to drop every last one of them, you get a chance to fight in the grand finale. That all clear? Crystal. Good. Oh, except you won't be setting foot outside or what? Not yet. You can start in Kabuki. I believe in you, V. Time to show this city what you're made of. I don't know that I'm gonna do any of that. Dr. Havoc and Radon. Introduction. The battery sphere is in dire straits. Your the Irinians have occupied almost half the city. Them and their Technorat Scourge have transformed almost everyone into hordes of mindless zombies. Battery Arena is now the final point of resistance against the invaders from Planet X. It seems the end is inevitable. That is, until the legendary mercenary pair arrive just in the nick of time after years of mysterious absence. Amidst the cigar smoke and glint of chrome armor, Dr. Havoc and Radon slaughter scores of enemies without mercy. After all, who could possibly slow the mighty force of a laser-armed mountain of muscle and his spitfire of a sidekick who can transform into a sentient cloud of radioactive gas? I'll tell you, no one so far. Rose Tenorio and Martoni L. Easier take us into the world of computer games first imagined in the bestseller novel Kibble and Scott by Abe Frost. Fasten your seatbelts and get ready for a roller coaster ride of comic book violence. If you've ever wondered what the action of the Battery Arena may have looked like, Dr. Havoc and Radon is a must buy. Dive in now. Uh, at some point, Moko, it's on my list. All right, a couple words about who you're going up against. Kabuki won't spoil this. Just come see. Arroyo, Buck, Six Street Granger, Real POS, Glenn, Cesar, Fist of Fucking Hammers, Animals Club, Rhino, Woman's a Legend, lays everyone flat. I don't know that I really want to be doing much fighting right now. But down. 
You ever gonna stop singing? Oh, that was the best performance of corporate wars I've ever seen! You and your musicals. Feeling kumquatty today? <laughs> Explosion of taste. <laughs> Look at that. Oh my god. <laughs> Health warning. Consumption of alcohol impairs your ability to drive. You don't have to be rich to sparkle. Oh my god. Second Amendment. Of course, that's what the armory would be called. Glad they just leave ammo laying around. That's nice. What up, dog? Oh, wait. I actually need to go here. Let's have a look. So I need to buy this. You've just received an iconic item along with a set of iconic crafting specs. You can use these to upgrade it to higher rarities, substantially increasing its power. Iconic weapons and clothing can be found all over Night City and are uniquely capable of increasing their rarity with the right components and crafting perks. When a higher rarity iconic item is crafted, the lower rarity version is destroyed. Thanks a lot. Kidoki. Tiancha, come quad for the soul. Yo, 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 my Cuber, Shroomers, and Fumers. Mr. Whitey here. Drop that milk toast kibble and rush to the nearest store for a taste of sweet, 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 clean speed. Because life is too short to be slow. Mr. Whitey, clean speed. Holy shit. Hello, it's time for your local news. The Aratama Matsuri Festival is nearly upon us. To mark the event, the streets of Night City will come alive with exquisite multi-story dashi floats. The festival program will also include musical performances by Biwa virtuosos and theatrical performances in the No tradition. The sponsor for the festival is the Arasaka Corporation. And in an exciting development, even Hanako Arasaka has announced her participation in the dashi parade. From all of us at WNS News, we wish you a safe and fun Matsuri. Enjoy yourselves, Night City. After the break, cyber psychosis, myth or reality? Stay tuned. I would love to stay tuned. I want to know all about that. But we'll learn about that later. Jackie's waiting for me. So, are we going to talk about yesterday? It's all in the report. Oh, I read it. Except there's no mention of me telling you to delta the fuck out of there. Yeah, no biggie. Not like that cyber psycho was a tank on two chrome legs. What the fuck were you thinking? There's a reason Max Tack exists, you know. Civilians were in danger. What was I supposed to do? Just watch them get mowed down? Listen, you... Me and every fucking cop in this city might as well be a civilian next to Max Tech. The day they give us the gear they're packing, go right ahead. Be the hero. Save the fucking day. But until then, you keep your head down and listen to me. That understood? You go, girl. Wearing heels to enforce the law? God damn. Those aren't even like. Tiny heels. What? All right, all right, all right. I'm just admiring the fact that you can do your job in heels, lady. NCPD scanner hustles. The NCPD will pay you to help fight crime. What's up, sir? Man of the hour. 
<laughs> Jeez, took you long enough. Worked up an appetite, just waiting. Sit down, let me finish this. Then we can drop in on Senor Vector. Didn't figure you as a type for age. Would have thought you'd find it too exotic. What do you mean? What's there not to like? Noodles? Check. Since sirloin? Check. Get some more chile action up in here, and you're looking at Mama Well's signature sopa de fideos. <laughs> Mentioned something about a surprise yesterday. Am I remembering right, or just had a brain fart? Probably both, because you usually forget shit. But it just so happens, I think I might have bagged us a sweet ass J.O.B. Go on. I mean, maybe it's not as big as that, but just that he's fronted by a little known someone named Dexter Deshaun. Huh? Only the top fixer in night fucking city. Badass black Jesus of the afterlife. 300 pounds of partly gold plated cool. How'd you manage to pull this? Trade in your spleen or something? As far as I know, we're not the type to get fingered by Dex. You know me? Oh, but t -Buck, she's the one that hooked us up. Got us talking. Knew it was a done deal the moment he laid eyes on me. Cause come on, ain't nobody who can resist this. Am I right? <laughs> sure, Jack. Whatever you say. Dexter Deshaun? What's the latest spec on him? I know you got info to spill. He's been off the grid for about two years. Word on the street was took a little vacay. Two years? That's exile, not a vacation. What is he up to? Uh, guessing he shoved pizzas in his mouth while jerking off the hardcore virtues. Important thing is, he's back. It's a fresh crew. Found us. Seems a bit idealistic. So what's the gig? We meant to come out in one piece? Our lord and savior wants to tell you everything himself. Face to face. Oh, no pressure, but, uh, this whole deal is riding on you now, I see. Why do I gotta go? You and T-Bug draw straws without me? T-Bug and Dex go way back, and my face is yesterday's news. Oh, Dex says he needs to check you. Talk to you. Look, V, it's his job, his rules. I can't blame him for taking a personal approach. And it ain't as bad as you think, okay? Trust me. Guess I got no choice then. Oh, I have a choice. This is a real deal when it comes to fixers. Don't get me wrong. Don't got nothing against the Padre or Wakako, but Dex is not even his own. Oh, really? No. It's always the same story. You land on fresh turf, local fixer waves his dick around, but he's smiling. And you'll be up to your neck in gigs and eddies. Still, all you are is another name in their little black book. Nifty tool for getting them a fat slice of whatever half-baked shit pie their client put on the table. Sure, you crack jokes over drinks, but in the end, it's biz. Gracias, Dios. Where you in on? your wheels. Gave them to my guy yesterday to smooth over the dents after our uh, dust off with the scabs. Thanks, Jack. Much appreciated. With all your active vehicles, your location was V. So yeah, I mean something doesn't feel right about this. It, it it seems like more than anything else, like information is a commodity here, and that people kind of operate off of very cryptic messaging like I, I am not this guy wants to vet me for a job that i don't understand i don't know this guy Some top notch work miguel did rides like it looks factory new we'll see about that so we rolling or what let's feel this factory new ride <laughs> We're still short. First stop. Ripper Dock. And homes. Easy on the gas, huh? I just ate. You got it, buddy. I was supposed to stop by Vicks anyhow. I got a date.
say. She's so sweet. Really gets me. Find me once Vic's done dusting your circuits. We'll hash out what Dex has cooked up for us. Nice jacket, dude. But you are not the masters of your memories. For your eyes do not belong to you, or rather, not only to you. Do you truly believe? That those who have sold you your mechanical eyes have resisted the temptation to peek through them? Cameras are all around us, even within us. Your joys, your worries, your life, for them it is all mere spectacle! Uh, ex ma'am, excuse me, can you not? I'm right here. truly believe? That those who have sold you your mechanical eyes have resisted the temptation to peek through them? Sir. Cameras are all around us, even within us. Sir. Your joys, your worries, your life. For them, it is all mere spectacle. But that would be really freaky, man. It's plausible. Like, what he's saying is plausible. Do you truly believe that those who have there's a lot of police around here. Shit, this place is cool. Hey, V. Dr. Vector will see you now. I'll sit tight over here. Me and Misty got a little catching up to do. Oh, uh, yeah? You look pleased. Because I am. Always. Makes for easier living. But... We got a new job lined up. From a big hitter at the afterlife. Oh, is it gonna be dangerous? Don't you worry, mi amor. We're bulletproof. Hello? Any horoscope storyteller group. Clients from group storyteller. Client number one slash twenty seventy seven MB Scorpio. You did it again. You rolled up your sleeves and cleaned the Augean stables. Everyone admires you, but you know that your only reward will be the next task you're given. There are not many like you in Night City, but without you, the city would have long turned into shadows and dust. Avoid flirty AIs that try to impress you with their knowledge of ancient Greek, and your lucky place is the net. Client number two, DK Capricorn. You're a born corpo. You plot, you plan, you calculate, and weave webs so tangled you sometimes lose yourself in them. If only you were the one calling the shots, you would already have the city at your feet. Unfortunately, you're caught up in a maze of responsibilities. But whatever you're plotting, make sure you see it through to the end. Avoid last-minute changes to plans, and your lucky place is Arasaka Tower. Client number three, Gemini. You know the city like the back of your hand. At night, you head out just to listen to the pulse of the streets, the juicy chatter, muffled screams, and drunken shouts, just to soak up the atmosphere. You've been everywhere. You've tried everything. You're a free spirit. In a night city, that makes you a unicorn. Avoid overworking and your lucky place, the newsroom. Client number four, Taurus. You've done your time in waiting in the shadows of others, but your patience finally paid off. The applause and flash photography are all yours. The world of media has opened its doors to you. Television, radio, brain dance, net, and this is just the beginning. Avoid the waves crashing at your feet, and your lucky place is the TV studio. Client number five, Aries. When, when everyone down and out, you come storming back in style. This city loves people like you. It's how legends are born. Your triumph is bittersweet. You returned, but you wound up on the street. Among the joy toys, con artists and panhandlers you know you've got a biz here to take care of but it can get tough when it feels like there's no end to it in sight avoid sketchy ripper docs your lucky place 
Jig Jig Street. Client number six, Leo. This city likes to devour players like you, but you know their kind well. They're, you know their kind too well to get caught off guard. They're on the ground. You know that in Night City, biz only gets done when you put on, when you put your blood, sweat, and tears into it. Not just flimsy dreams. You eat dreamers for breakfast. Avoid genetically modified nuts, and your lucky place is Haywood. Client number seven, Aries. You've been in demand. You barely finished one task before somebody's lined up to give you another. It often seems like you're on your own, but always remember you have a team you can count on. Avoid emotional policemen with difficult pasts. Your lucky place, a bar inspired by Babylonian culture. Client number eight, Capricorn. Although you've been riding with nomads for years, you're a corpo at heart. You knew that from the moment you stepped into Kanpeki Plaza, you felt at home there. You've had enough of a camp life, constantly repairing generators, the sand gritting between your teeth. You would have given up ages ago if you weren't so damn good at it. Avoid Raffin Shiv, your lucky place, Kompeki Plaza. Note, highly susceptible to the Barnum effect. Client number nine, Virgo. You've been in the city for a short time, but you already know the what and the how. You've already accomplished the toughest part. You have a good team at your back. You've just been landing small jobs for now, but you know you're hungry for something bigger. Avoid getting attached to friendly talking machines, and your lucky place is the music scene. Anybody there? Okay. I'm glad we all could learn today what our Zodiac has for us. And they say I've got my head in the clouds. Earth to be. Jeez, this place is bleak. Sprawling metropolis that's just absolutely destitute Vicky surprise every old ripper it's good to see you though a common practice cyberware installation is still a dangerous and invasive procedure which can only be performed by qualified specialists ripper docs there are several ripper docs operating throughout night city who offer a variety of different cyberware upgrades select your desired cybernetic upgrade from the list and enjoy your new abilities good to see you too V. Oh, wow. What do I owe the pleasure today? Last gig. Had to jack into a client's neuro socket. Think I might have gotten spiked. Experiencing migraines, nausea, hypersensitivity to bright lights. Whole kit and caboodle. All right, kit. We'll sort you out in a flash. Besides that, how are things? Met a new fixer. He gave me a job. Name's Dexter Deshaun. Known quantity from the afterlife. No denying you're moving up. But something you're not telling me, Vic? Keep your guard up, that's all. I've heard some things about Dex. He's not as chill as he makes himself out to be. Hmm. Need some new kit, but tools, not toys, Vic. Time I bumped up my sights and got a grip. <laughs> really? Now? Finally? Vic, shit's getting real. Got a job from Dex to Sean, hitting the major leagues. Any tech that can perform. The Dexter Deshaun? <laughs> well, that is something. But let me guess. Hasn't paid you yet. $21,000? I don't think I have that. Gonna keep me waiting all Quit day. crying, Vic. I'll bring you the Eddies later, with interest. You know I will. Hmm. Last time. You hear? Chair, please. Sit down and relax. Hard to relax and whatever. I'll trust you. And, and yes, DL. Yes, that was my normal voice. I've been using an accent Karoshi for the rest of optics. It. Best I've got, and should be about right under the circumstances. Now, Jack, in. Karoshi? Whoa. 
thick. Nothing tops that on the market. Hmm. Sounds like it could come in handy then. I gave you my word I'd pay you back, but this might be too rich for my blood. We'll work something out. Right now, I'm just out to make sure you get back in one piece. Eddie's in hand. Okay. You peruse and choose while I scan. Let's see what's going on inside. Cybernetic implants are mechanical replacements for the organic parts of your body. It can give you superhuman-like abilities which can improve your combat capability and help you survive in hazardous conditions. Although a common practice in 2077, the installation of cyberware is still an invasive and sometimes dangerous medical procedure. Only specialists known as Ripper Docs are trusted to install cyberware safely. Jeez. Ocular system. Or hand. Hiroshi Optics MK1. Hiroshi Optical Cyberware is a widely popular suite composed of electro neuro enhancements with environment scanning functionality. And increases the chance to ricochet shots with power weapons. Directly links the user's optical implant to the weapon system, offering real time data tracking. That's cool. Mark one, like I said, decent enough scanner. Displays data on your cornea. Cherry on the top's a built-in external lens disruptor. In layman's terms, any surveillance cam will capture your face as a blur. And just remember, your body will still show up as crystal clear. Hmm, this should do the trick. Talks to Kuroshi Tech too. I'm ready. Carve away. Excellent. Let's do this. What are we doing, Doc? Lay that major league arm of yours right here. Holy shit. So, what's new in the life of Victor Vector? <sighs> yeah, if I'm being honest, not much. And that's fine with me. I used to live in a world where all that mattered was who's who, what's what, and how's why. And what happened? One day, I just dropped it and never looked back. I'll never be a legend in this town. But been sleeping nights ever since. Just like that. Thanks. Now, a bit of anesthetic and I can start cutting. Oh my god! Feel anything? Same as always. Don't feel a thing. You ask me that every time, you know? Not as if things are gonna be any different today. Sure thing, kid. I mean, not like there's any risk of a stroke or paralysis, but <laughs> what do I know? I'm just a doctor. That's what I thought. Lights out for a minute, all right? Okay, let's test this. See the magic in action. Linking you in. Oh my God! You might feel a little discomfort at first. Blurred vision, low contrast, glitches. Well, how's it look? Feel all right to you? Seen more dramatic improvements before. Patience, kid. Give it a minute. Scanning people with your optical cyberware can provide you with a lot of useful info, such as how strong an enemy might be, who's in their crew, and what type of weapon they use. As a skilled net runner, you can see a list of quick hacks which you can use against your enemies. Time for the scanner. It might take you a few seconds to adjust, but first time's really the charm, with anything, really. Scanner should eventually sync with your thought processes and read your intentions. Read your intentions. I also inject an NCPD file search. Run into any ne'er do wells? <laughs> you know exactly what they ne'er did well. A database of individuals with bounties assigned to them is now available to use. 
can identify these wanted persons with your scanner. Since all are wanted dead or alive, the methods you use to claim your reward are entirely up to you. Jeez. <laughs> it ought to work like a charm. Now draw your weapon. You should see your ammo count in a brand new sight. Whoa. How about the neurovirus from the last job? Can you check it? Done and gone while we were putting in your implant. And a full sweep on your soft and circuits. Zap the critter. You're certified bug free. Shit, Victor, not bad. I don't know what to say. Say you'll take this and remember the dosage. Two whiffs now, and another two in an hour. What am I looking at? A mild stim. Should boost neurotransmission in the short term and muffle some of the side effects while the implant takes. Thanks again, Vic. You're the best. I owe you. Go on, kid. Show them what you're made of. And once you hit the big leagues, don't forget where you came from. Man, what a trip. What's taking so long? Move your ass, S.A. Dex is waiting on us. Oh, I get it, but oof. You just take more of your stuff, Vic. Who's winning? Hernandez. You know, in the old days, that cripple Malone would have been flat on the boards. Now every last fighter's got extra skull lining. Absorb 75% of every blow. Got cash riding on this? Nah, just looking. <laughs> it's out of habit more than anything else. Miss it, don't you? Ah. Uh, How's Biz going? Uh, can't complain. Corporals learn to keep their distance, and Sokka's back hiring lone mercs. They all gotta have the newest, shiniest implants. Good thing you got Misty here to help. Handles your griping well. Yeah, renting out her shop's the best decision I ever made. You know what? Seems like you're the only person in Night City who's happy with this lot. You get to a certain age, you drop all your illusions. Life just gets easier from there. I like that. It's true. And you just watch the fight and help people out for free. Something's got to go bad at some point here. Chopper looks a little out of whack, babe. I can release it for you, but you'd have to watch out for negative energy fields and avoid mean reds. Anything red. <sighs> Thanks, Misty. You're the best. And your aura. It needs tending, baby. You gotta brush it daily. It's just no good if you don't. Make sure your hands are clean and caress the filaments of light along their length. They'll be strong then. They'll be firm. Uh huh. Firm. <laughs> v, yo, listen up. I talked to Dex while you were in with the doc. He's waiting in his ride. For you. Ain't but a hop to where he's parked. Next to Gramsci Burgers. Okay. Do my best to talk us up. V, listen. I've got this delicate matter. That's why I called you. The number of cyber psycho attacks in the city is on the rise. Now that's probably not news to you, but this issue matters to me. For a few reasons. There are people who say cyberpsychosis can be treated. Right. And I know exactly how that sounds, but I believe even an unproven therapy is still better than a bullet to the brain. If I get a tip about a possible attack, I'll give you a call. Maybe you can investigate before Max Tack hits the scene. 
But remember, you're not there to execute anybody. Try to incapacitate the attacker, and I'll send someone to pick him up. I hope that's all clear. Hmm. There are various ways to incapacitate enemies without killing them. Non-lethal takedown, non-lethal click hacks, non-lethal weapons, EMP grenades, and some combat gadgets. Weapon mods that change damage to non-lethal. Given weapon, combat gadget, or quick hack deals non-lethal damage, it will be mentioned in the description. So we're still very much in the tutorial part of this game, it seems like. Like, we're just getting little bits and pieces here. Do you truly believe that those who have sold... By the way, those of you that have made it this late, I really am uh, grateful that you've made it this late. And thanks again if you're watching the VOD for coming along with us. And I hope you've been enjoying the run. It's always a slow ease into some of this stuff. It's kind of like Red Dead, right? It starts off kind of slow, not a too much to analyze. And then, boom, we start getting into it. And, oh, baby. This has been a lot of fun just to kind of get to know the world a little bit. We get a little bit of context. Like a lot of this is really setting a tone for the context through which things happen, right? Like there's a lot of distrust, a lot of people who act in their own self-interest, a lot of people who preach autonomy, but often take it away. Like this is really a land of dissonance and a land of like ideals that experientially just don't align so you're really looking at a lot of people on the whole that are having just continuous experiences that misalign with the general expectations that this world seems to have and i i, I find it very interesting to see how like we have all this amazing technology all this stuff at our fingertips and like everybody's suffering like, we haven't really done good with it. Install at your own risk, foreign body. Calling victim to crime is a common part of daily life for many Night City residents. If you come across a hostile situation in progress, I don't want to get involved with that. Oh, what's up, man? Yo, Mr. V, a pleasure. What's up, Dex? Dexter Deshaun in the flesh. Ample indeed. <laughs> Let's roll. You mind if I ask you something right off the bank? Would you rather live in pieces, Mr. Nobody, die ripe, old, and smelling slightly of urine, or go down for all times in a blaze of glory, smelling near like posies, without seeing your 30th? Very interesting question. But I'm going to point out here that the purpose of this question is very likely not my answer. It's how I answer it. Now, I realize that I'm cheating a little bit here. I don't even know if I'm going to have a choice here, but I realize that if I do have a choice, I'm cheating a little bit here by pausing and analyzing this. But one of the consistent patterns that we're seeing in this game to this point is the establishment of dominance when you are working with people you don't know. So we get in this car, there's a bodyguard standing at the door, we get in and Dexter immediately jumps to asking a question that requires an immense amount of nuance, expecting that I'm gonna have an answer right away. It throws me off. It takes me away. It gives me an experience that inherently misaligns with whatever expectation I had going into this car ride. And it establishes power. We're see we saw that with the cop at the beginning of the game, and we're seeing it with Dexter right now. Do something unexpected to establish that you are in control of the situation. It's a really fascinating tactic, and it works. I am off kilter already because now i have to show i have to answer this question and i have to decide 
Do I answer this realistically and honestly? Do I go in the direction of saying, I don't really have an answer for that. I'd have to think about it more. Or do I lie and pick something that I think he wants to hear based on what my projections are onto him? It's an impossible situation. In reality, I'd be like, ah, gee, I don't know, man. You'd have to give me a lot more context. I'm not entirely sure I can answer this question. Do I want to be a nobody who lives a quiet life or do I want to have an amazing life that goes down in flames at 30? Ah, uh, how do you quantify that? Are we talking your idea of an amazing life? Or are we talking my idea of an amazing life? And does that sync up, right? Like I'm terrible for questions like this because I want more information in order to make an informed decision. In reality, what we're talking about here is just, it, it's in a way to establish power and to see how I respond. Do I answer right away or do I pause and think about it? And that's gonna send more of a message to him than anything. <laughs> How they remember you, that's all that counts. Mr. Nobody's don't survive in Night City. Is Hello. this some sort of test? This some sort of test? Yeah. Huh? Just a pet topic of mine. You mean riddles? No, Mr. V. Ontology. All right, listen close. Scanning a serious job now. Playing gargantuan compared to smashing up a scab home. So I reestablished some power there by not playing along with him. I don't know if that's good or bad, but... Hang on. I got a question of my own now. Why all this, Dex? Why me? Could have had Jackie or T-Buck sitting here. Could have just done this on comms. Call me old-fashioned, but I like to look anyone I do biz with in the eye. Had the pleasure of meeting the Jackster in the past. And sweet T-Bug helped this brother out two years ago. So here we are. Besides all that, I've got a special little pre-mission just for you. But we'll get to that. Let me hear it. What's the job? There's this prototype tech. A biochip to be precise. The job's to grab it. Simple. Yeah. Guessing it belongs to a corp. Mm-hmm. Arasaka. Surely that's no problem. Um... Yeah. No, no problem. Just a death sentence. NC's Arasaka's turf. Nobody fucks with them here. What can I say, Mr. V? High risk, high reward. All of a sudden, not so yeah, simple. Right. Besides that, I'm no lead here. Ain't gonna leave no trace for them to follow because we're gonna do this clean and on the hush hush. We understand each other. You work this out? Got a plan? Two things. First, a conundrum with the Maelstrom boys. Needs active resolving that. The second, the rendezvous. Simple. The client who brought us the job's anxious. She wants to parlay with one of the team. Client. What's her thing? Why she need to meet? Woman's name's Evelyn Parker. Betting her wasn't easy. Put the word out I was looking for any kind of intel. Right, and? Some brothers from Pacifica got back to me. Told me to stop looking. End of convo. <laughs> anyway, our little client insisted on meeting someone with skin in the game. You know, who'll be there for it all. Yours truly will be remote. T-Bug ain't no people person, and Jaggy's only good at some things. I know you know what I mean. Pretty much leads you. What's the issue needs resolving with Maelstrom? Got a beef? Slot in the shard. Very interesting. This whole conversation. Because in addition to like this vying for power, there's leveraging that's happening. And it's really easy to look at Dex as being the person who has the power and control in this moment because he's the one that has information that we don't have and is determining how to disseminate that information to me. And I have no doubt that he's not letting on everything. Why would he? He's got to establish that he can trust me first, and it's probably a need-to-know basis. 
And it's very clear that it's not as simple as he described immediately. But if you look at this exchange reciprocally, you start to see that I actually have the power because he's making a request of me. He is saying very clearly, you have a set of skills that I trust and thus, I want you to do this task for me. And if you're keen in this moment, in the back of your head, one of the things that you're thinking is, well, if it's that important and that lucrative, do it yourself. I understand that his role is to be a fixer. He's the person who sets these jobs up. But ultimately, if the only thing he stands to gain is a sliver of whatever the take is because he's the one that found me. I have a lot of leverage here because if he really sees me as being the only guy capable of doing this, he is mercy to my demands if I have any. And that could include asking for more information or simply saying, I'm not going to do it. So in exchanges like this, not that many of us are ever going to be in exchange in the back of a car with somebody who's trying to, you know, fix a whole heist. But in your everyday conversations, I think it's very important for everybody to understand the different leverages they have in those conversations, especially when you're in some sort of negotiating circumstance. Because it's often the case that, like, the person asking for help is the person who is relinquishing some power to me i hold the cards and if i pay if i overly pay attention to the amount of power that he has i lose sight of my own power and i lose a sense of control i've got a classic tale for you psycho gang doing his thing two weeks back jumped a military convoy got away with the gear corp don't even know maelstrom's involved now see, Convoy was carrying the Flathead, a little combat bot, a prototype. And I need me that bit of high-grade military tech. Because if we don't get that bot, we don't get no soccer chip. And we sure as hell don't get no happily ever after. But don't get excited. It's a single-use toy. Now, I flat out purchased the damn thing from Maelstrom. Problem is, I did so from a gent went by the name of Brick. I say when. His brick was the leader. Three days after we'd see the idea, his friend and gangmate, one Simon Randall, aka Royce, plain dropped his ass. Royce is in charge now, and I got no way of knowing if he aims to honor his predecessor's word. To add to this shitstorm, one Meredith's doubt of Militech has developed an interest in said convoy. Royce guy, what's he like? A straight psychopath, chrome loving kind. Big club in this town. I'll give you that. Except few of its other members. No matter the stakes, would put a friend and associate through an industrial microwave dryer. Apparently, first thing to burst are the eyeballs. Get a nice clear pop. Then the rest goes goulash. Who's the prima donna? Corpo agent. Internal affairs. Been skidding around town asking after the convoy as if her life depended on finding it. The one lead she's got zip tied in her trunk. Stick up her ass ain't growing any shorter. So she must be getting desperate. Be wise to think how you could use that. Of course, to do so, you'll need that frazzled cat's info. Sending it now. I think I got everything. Time I got to work. Well, that's just music to my ears. I'll set up the meet with Miss Parker at Lizzie's bar. Flathead, though, is gonna be all you. One more thing, Mr. V. Quiet life or blaze of glory? Hmm? Later now. Probably quiet life. Performing certain actions will reward you with street cred. Build your street cred to make a name for yourself in Night City Underworld. Doing so will open up new opportunities. Jackster, talk to Dex. <laughs> yeah, Gordito's a big deal. 
literally a nun, yeah? Guy certainly knows how to protect his biz. Wants to put us on a few small kinks. Prep work, I guess. Before lining us up a big job. There's this combat bot, military prototype. Maelstrom clept it. Then Dex paid to take it off their hands just before the gang goons had a switch up in management. I right, heard about that. Royce versus Brick. Hostile takeover. That sums it up. Dex wants us talking to Royce. Gave the deets of some Militech agent, too, but... I don't know how much help she stands to be. Ha. <laughs> Nick, you don't sound thrilled. Royce, what do you know about him? He's fucking whack something special. Junkie snort junk. Royce snorts chrome. Then there's the other thing. Gotta meet the client who put the job on the table. Evelyn Parker. You? Well, what's Dex gonna do? Ride around in his limo, chat chicks up on the hollow? Parker wants to meet someone on the crew. Dex gave me the nod. Must know what he's doing. So, how you want to play this? Maelstrom or Parker? What's first? Parker. I think I ought to see her first. See what she's like, what she's after. What I lay. In that case, I'll hit the off boots and put my nose to the ground. Still around. I still know where you go. All right. Pretty cool. That's where we'll leave it. And we will go find Ms. Parker in part two. Uh, VOD watchers, this is the part where I say thank you so much for watching this. I hope that you enjoyed the introduction here to Cyberpunk. I know... We've got a long way to go, but I'm really excited for this playthrough, and I hope you are too. Thanks for making it all the way to the end. I appreciate you watching the VOD. Those of you that support the stream via uh, membership or tip or buying merch while I'm offline, I'd like to say thank you for doing that. You can find the links to do those things down in the description as well as hitting the join, or the join button. Also, make sure you give a thumbs up if you like the video. It helps me out a lot. Feel free to leave a comment. I love reading the comments. Tell me your thoughts. Just please don't put any spoilers or backseating, but give me your thoughts on what the uh, episode was like. If there's anything that stood out to you, anything that you liked, didn't like, whatever. I do really enjoy them. And thanks as always for watching the videos. If you think there's people that would love to watch them, share them. It's the best way to support the channel and it's absolutely free to do. I'll catch you in part two and I'm very much looking forward to it.